29th. Uh, Tuesday, April 29th. We're going to be here for the next two <coughs> hours talking pro wrestling with you guys. Monday Night Raw from last night. Pretty busy week news-wise over the past week, so we'll be uh, running down some news and rumors. i got to tell you, I was in a good mood, and then... Yeah. Something always happens right before we go live. You were having some problems in here with yeah. computers and everything else. Did you get your phone? Um, I do. I do have it on me. Um, and uh, I had a problem with the websites. God, I thought I got hacked. Yeah. I thought I got hacked. But uh, I contacted my uh, my company. Basically, none of the uh, the news posts were going through, and all my categories for you know WWE results, TNA results, the news category. You got to pick a category before the post to go through, and they all disappeared in my uh, control panel. Yeah, they were all go up. Not good. Not good. So I contacted uh, the people that uh, my my tech team, and uh, they got right on it, and it was just a, a simple cache. Issue. So I think they said right before they happen. hung up. They said, "Oh, and P.S. What's it like living with a rock star, man? Like the guy's a fucking, he's a hero and a legend." To where did they? Where did? Where's this rock star shit come uh, from? Where did, where did, yeah. this every once about in a while, every once in a while, I have like a little catchphrase or a little saying or uh -huh. a little joke, and I try and see how far I can shove it down people's throats until yeah? it sticks. So you're a real life rock star. Tonight. That's my new one. That's yeah. your gimmick. Tonight. That's my new gimmick. He's a rock star, folks. He's a rock star. In the flesh, baby. So, uh, we gotta, uh, we'll rock get the plugs out of the way. fat, too, by the way. Huh? I know, <laughs> I know. I quit drinking <coughs> until, I mean, I'm until drinking tonight. tonight because it's WZR TV Tuesdays and it wouldn't be WZR TV no. Tuesdays without some beers Correct. mixed in. So, I brought back the beers tonight. I brought them back last night, too. But, uh, I didn't drink all weekend long for UFC. I didn't drink at all last week. You were drinking. I was drinking. You were drinking hard. Yeah, very right. hard. UFC was good. It on, was a good on show. Saturday, Very right? Good show. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We gotta we gotta talk about that. Um, it was really good. Late. I mean, you missed the prelims because you were busy working. I saw the replay of the flying knee. Yeah, I missed the one. There was before a that. big no after. That was the first fight. Flying oh, okay, knee. that's the how. That's how the show started. That was sick with right. that. And the first round was sick. great before that flying knee. Yeah. Second fight. There's a. Any other show would have been knockout of the night. Danny Castillo, who actually just added me on Twitter. He's a boxer too, by the way. It's a different box. I know, I know. Have you looked at the undercard for Mayweather this Saturday? No, I haven't. Dude, you got Amir Khan in the really? semi main. You got Adrian Broner in the opening. Wow, really? Adrian Broner, wow. Amir Khan, and then Mayweather Maidana. It's about that time. That's an insane it's about for boxing. Time. For boxing, for boxing. boxing? That's boxing. one of the best cards Listen, I've seen. Boxing never has an undercard. Boy, seen. Boxing never no. has an undercard. Bro. When UFC first started, really, I mean, not when they first really got big, but like when they got monstrously big and, mm -hmm. and were like clear, like with the Brock Lesnar era, mm -hmm. or maybe a little bit before that, and it was clear that yo, this is how we're doing it. We're doing a pro wrestling lineup of real fights, so right. like every fight means something. UFC's always been good about it, right? But when they were really, really kicking ass on pay per view, boxing mm -hmm. tried a couple shows to have an undercard that Stacked mattered. Stacked undercard, right? And then they stopped doing it. Mm -hmm. This is the first example in a long time where I can remember where boxing's bringing their fucking A game. Yeah, Adrian Broner, and it's Showtime, and, uh, no less. Amir Khan, wow. you know they, these is are it? like they, well, yeah, Mayweather yeah. Le left. Uh, oh, that's right, he did leave. So this is like yeah. Showtime. Fucking best foot forward kind of thing, you know. You know what I, I, I don't like about that is you don't get Larry and you don't get uh, what's his that. name, right? You don't get Jim Lampley. Jim Lampley. You don't get Larry so Merchant. Right, you right. don't get Max Keller. Well, okay, Jim. You don't even get. Well, okay, uh, Jim. Okay, Jim. Let me tell you, Jim. Whoa. <laughs> okay, Jim. <laughs> By the uh, what is it? By the Association of Boxing. Boxing. <laughs> um, and you don't get Michael Buffer as the ring announcer. You get Jimmy Lennon Jr. Jimmy Lennon Jr. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it's showtime. Sounds like a clown, right? Yeah. Sounds like, like you should a be clown. at a fucking children's birthday it's party. It's like a clown getting his nut stepped on or something. <laughs> <laughs> we were watching, uh, God, God bless him, Bruce Buffer. Fighting! Yes. And he does like a whole 360 hey, turn. Give me Jesus. something. All right, Bruce. this is. He's going to have a heart attack. These are my note cards if I'm Bruce Buffer. He goes. Fighting! Like right in his, his fucking right eyeballs. In his you know? <laughs> and uh, the best guy who would play into that, Dan Hardy. Remember the guy with the red mohawk? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He would fucking play. Is he into back the, in UFC? He would, he's uh, actually doing the. Um, like the England. European they fired team. him for the incident with. Um, no. Didn't they fire Hardy? No. Uh, yeah, Hardy was going. Something no. happened. Well, they find him or something. He did something. What incident? During a fight. I don't know. Dan Hardy. No, no. I you're, remember you're Dan Hardy. Him with somebody else. 
But um, no, Dan Hardy now does the uh, European play-by-play. He's like the European Joe Rogan. Yeah. For the yeah. the shows, the commentary. Mm. But he would do. He would. He would go like this when right when Bruce Buffer's in his face, he'd be like, "Come on, yeah, come yeah. on, get come right on. in there, get yeah, right yeah." In there. Who was right. the guy that? I think he would even do the Hogan, and you know, something happened. The guy tapped out or something like that, and he kept holding on to the. Uh, That's happened a million times. I don't know. That wasn't Dan Hardy. No, 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 no. All right, no doubt. You're you're a bigger mark than than I am for you. I'm a huge MMA mark, and I'm about to be having uh, eFightNews.com. I know that's coming. coming soon. It's Frankster. coming, kids. Prankster yeah. uh, talked to it. Said they're uh, they're gonna launch it. Very and excited about. You're those. gonna be the head dude. You're gonna be the head cat over there. Yeah, like I don't like I how you keep for, saying I'm the Ryan Clark of anything because. I was the Matt Boone of shit long before there was a Ryan Clark. But okay, I'll be the Ryan Clark of you. You, you see how our, our chat traffic tonight is a little bit lower mm-hmm. than normal? Well, you put a plug up on Facebook. Yeah. Let me tell I you. Got half your fucking followers, though. You got, way more. you got websites to plug your Facebook and Twitter on that shit. I just passed 1,000 Twitter followers today. 1,000? Yeah, that's a bit. I just, High five. I just started my Twitter account like three months ago, so and I don't have any sites to plug it on. This yeah. is all, and you didn't plug my Twitter that much. You would plug, I have you would, plugged your Twitter. Not that much, I said. You, that's why I said not that much, because you have. But you plug my Facebook usually. Right. Even when you do... Uh, Every once in a while. Even when you steal my play-by-play, you plug my Facebook, not my Twitter. Yes. So this is me getting them on my own, and I'm pretty proud of that. I got 1,015 as of last Didn't you tell me the other day you went in there and you just randomly requested yes. motherfucker? <laughs> no, no, no. Not randomly request motherfucker. Technically, yes, but it would be like guys that are uh, fans of the website. Fans support. of the website. Like right. the Raja, so SC Scoops, sense. 24, right. the sites I work for, mm-hmm. I was like, yo, hey, follow me, I'll follow you. It makes sense that you're getting pro wrestling, yeah. and not just fakes. fakes no, 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 I want people that know who I am, know my writing. Like, Absolutely. I don't just go to, to fucking WWE.com's Twitter and add all their fans. Right, right, right. I add people that I actually write for. You don't want their fans. No. You don't want their no. fans. You ever see some of the stuff that they put up on Facebook? I can only imagine. Oh, oh my God. <clears throat> Still real to a lot of people. Still real to a lot of people, man. <laughs> Yo, um, something else that's very real is yes. a is a hardcore reunion that's gone wrong. Oh man, what do you got over there, pizza? Yeah, you want a piece of pizza? Uh, maybe during the break. Okay. Yeah. Well, you um, got your six pieces out in the kitchen. Before. I know. I still Grab got a couple. Here. Unless yeah. you go out, you kept jacking my nuggets last night that were out there. Didn't you? Every them. time you every time I grab a beer, you, you grab my nuggets. I grab a nugget. <laughs> well, that's your move. He'll he'll help his goddamn self when I'm sitting there working my ass off in the kitchen. He'll come in. Oh, what you got there? No. <laughs> <laughs> grab a couple bites. So pay me. Get out of here, man. Get out of here. Well, anyway, um, yes, hardcore road trip. We need to talk about that. Um, I think right. we should have got Big Vito on to talk because he was part of it, and you you chose not to. But yeah, I yeah. know. Um, well, because it would have became the Big Vito show. So. Yeah, I, we, <laughs> uh, without a doubt. Yeah, without we couldn't a doubt. just say, "Hey, can you come on for ten minutes and just help us with the story here? Yeah. Help us tell the story." No, you know, we got to talk about my gym. And he would have got in this down. I can't believe they're screwing the indie guys. Guys, you don't like, understand. You just don't know. Oh, shut oh, up. Shit. And I do I, love I, Big Vito, but God, that guy can go on. Yeah, you watched his promo. I didn't watch it, and and we'll explain what we're right. talking about here as we go on. But uh, the promo at the show, yeah. did he go on and on and on in his promo? Uh, they all, everybody got a turn. He went a little bit longer than the others. He was the longest one. He went a little bit Shocker. longer. Shocker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we'll get into that in a second. Love but you, let me uh, let me say something, man. So this Facebook. was the story for those who don't. Oh, you're gonna. Nah, no, 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 let me okay. talk about Facebook first, yes. and then we'll get into. Uh, we're gonna talk Facebook, then we're gonna get into hardcore road trip. Mm-hmm. Uh, run it's that a continuation home. of a story you told at the top last of the week. hour, right? First hour last week. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so here, here's the deal with Facebook. Here's the deal with, uh, with <laughs> Facebook. So so listen, uh, I got five thousand. 5,000 friends on there. I'm maxed out. Yeah. And then there's... I keep telling I you know. to make a business. I'm going to. You're going to get... To. You're going to be at like 50,000. I, I hope you so. Got, you I got what? 2,000 followers because I, they can't I mean, add you? Just, I don't know. Between one and 2,000. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying because followers. they can't add you. you got thousands of people following you. Right. So they got to follow me. be part of it. Yeah. So I'm maxed out. I'm maxed out at uh, 5,000 people. And then I got one or 2,000 followers. Whatever I got 2,500 friends and like 200 followers. You're getting there, though. You're right. up there. I'm trying. Um, is yours a work account or just personal? Uh, I don't know. No. I don't know. Well, anyway, I so, hope I don't so I'm maxed out. And, and, and uh. listen, the majority of people that comment on the threads that I put up, 
They are awesome, man. It's very rare that I get somebody that comes in there and causes an you got issue. You a good group of fans. Tries to create a problem. Yeah. They're, they're awesome, man. They're awesome. So you great fans. We get we get a lot of emails. Um, you know, for, for one reason or another, some people just don't like me. You know, they they can't stand me. So I got a I got an email. In different ways, we're both very unlikable people. We're unlike. I mean, some people yeah. just don't. I mean, hell. Or a website we provide free pro wrestling news and some of the comments that you see from these people yeah. is oh this website sucks you're terrible you get More everything like, uh, wrong this that and the other thing we're giving you free pro wrestling news on a website and you know it's like go you outside worked up. go outside but, uh, take a deep breath drink a beer <laughs> smoke a joint do yeah. whatever it is you do Squeeze man a rubber ball. life um, is too short you're getting free pro wrestling news on a website I'd Life's say we're short. like, we're, before you get into it, we're like a Vince Russo or somebody yeah, like that, where either yeah. people love us, love us or they or hate, hate us. us. There really is no middle they thing. They hate us. We, to some people, Why they hate? Why to they some hate? people were very unlikable. This is something about it. our personalities, and I and I, I can see that very really? much. Very much. I, I think see I'm an alright guy. And I'm pretty good at self-analyzing. I can see how I'm a, I'm considered an asshole or I not. I think I'm an alright dude. Right. Yeah, I think you're my best buddy. Of course you're an alright dude. I think you're an alright guy. I do, I'm just saying, I could see where people would be like, yeah, that dude's a dick. Really? And people are like that with me, and I could completely see that too. But they either think we're complete assholes, or we're the greatest thing oh, ever. Right, right, right. There is no middle ground. I know. Right. So anyway, your so Facebook. Blah, I, blah, blah, I get, blah, blah, I get blah. an email, and we get a lot of emails all the time, and some people are like, you know, great work, you guys do an awesome job, this, that, and the other thing. And then there are the other people, where you're always wrong. You never get anything right. You suck. Ah, you were wrong. You suck. Even though you yourself. said rumored, not confirmed. Set me up. <laughs> so I got an email this uh, this past week from a fan. A fan. I guess you would call him a fan. A guy reads the website. And he said uh, so, something, something, something along the lines of, You're ugly. Your mother's ugly. It's your true dog's, those two points. Your dog's ugly. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Your dog's ugly. Your dog's gorgeous. And I hope you die of cancer. I agree with three of the four, but the dog is a cute dog. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> go ahead. So, <clears throat> I took the email and I put it up on Facebook. And below that, I had said wrestling fans can be so charming or so loving. Yeah. Right? Sarcastic. The love. The lo uh, sarcastic. You were being sarcastic. Yeah. Well, the problem here is when you got 5,000 friends and you got another one or 2,000 followers... Not everybody comments on the threads. Not even the, close. The, the, not even like 2%. close. 2%. Like 2%. Yeah, even if you get 100 so, comments, that's what, 100 out of 7,000? And out of those six or 7,000 people that are on my Facebook yeah. page, I'm guessing that there are a few hundred that, although they added me, they don't like me. So somebody went... And some people add you just to talk shit to you every time you post. Yeah, right. Yeah. You well, suck. You know. You're terrible, this, that. Well... One of those six or seven thousand people, or a couple of them, went to Facebook and reported the post. Facebook checked out the post. I log in. They tell me that it was against their terms of service. This, that, and the other thing, and I'm suspended for seven days from Facebook. So this happened last Friday. I think I have three hours and twenty-two hours, three days and twenty-two hours left before I'm unsuspended. So on Friday evening, I can return to Facebook after Well, you have learned served. your lesson? I've learned my lesson that <laughs> from now on... Because you've 20 times. <coughs> from now on, <coughs> when I make a thread, I can't cuss. Um, I've, got to, I've got to just put the links to the website. Man. The problem here is, and, yeah. and listen, I'll admit it to you guys, I use Facebook as a marketing tool, as a promotional tool. And as an interactive tool. You, you talk and, to your fans all right, the time. I try to reply as often as I can, right. but it's so busy most of the time that I let the people oh, dude, it's just kind of interact but, with, with themselves yeah. on there. When I first opened and mine, I was trying. My, my motto was going to be, anybody says something, I'm going to try and respond. It, within a day, I'm like, yeah, that's impossible. It, it, creates, <laughs> you know, it creates kind yeah. of a community where I know a lot of people you guys that come to the chat room, you guys have become friends and friended each other yeah. through Facebook, and you guys are all wrestling fans, so you get to know each other and you become friends. Whether it be, yeah. I keep perking it. Common whether it be, and right, common interest, and you become friends on either Facebook or the chat room, wherever. Um, so, 
I want to keep the community, you know, I want to keep the Facebook page. So I learned my lesson, and not only that, but like I said, I use it as a promotional and a marketing tool for WZRonline.com and ProWrestlingScoops.com where I can build growth on the yeah. websites because advertise shit. when I put those links up, Facebook sends, you know, about 3,000 unique visitors per day from those links, which is a lot of traffic to the website. So Very good. I'm losing quite a bit of money here, yeah. to be honest with you, I'm losing quite yeah. a bit of money being suspended for seven days. But what are you going to do? I'm going to serve out my suspension. And the problem is, I don't know who reported me. Facebook's That's not okay. going to Facebook's not going to tell me who reported me. So there's going to be that one guy. You and can't, yeah, what you're saying I don't know is, who he because is. you don't know who it is, you can't get rid of him. I can't get rid of him. I can't block him. I can't ban him. So if I do it again, they're going to go and report me. So I've just got to kind of suck it up. Dude, what and did you say to get suspended? Do you know what the exact comment was? It was the email that I had just said. It was a fan that sent an email yeah. to me. That said, your mother's ugly, your dog's ugly, yeah, yeah, but what you're you ugly. Uh, I put that up on Facebook as a post saying yeah. wrestling fans can be so loving. And because a guy that funny. emailed you cussed in his email, they suspended you? Because I put it up on Facebook. It was the language. Facebook so somebody sucks. else's language got used to Somebody suspended. else's email oh, that geez. I put up on Facebook to let the fans know, to let you guys know this is the type of I emails. Would love this is the type of emails that we get. I put that up on Facebook yeah. for you guys to see and Facebook got I would work. love to meet the guy. That is legitimately upset, offended I by know. something like that. Clearly, they're not. Clearly, it's somebody who, like you said, has a vendetta against you, wants to fuck you. It doesn't like me that that went and reported fuck with it. you. Right. I should say, Nobody's. but uh, you never know. Maybe he wants to fuck you. But uh, fuck with you and just be like, because I can't, I can't imagine somebody reading you saying, "Yeah, look at this guy trashing me." You would think if somebody doesn't like you, they would see that and be like, ah, they fucking told you. Right, right. But instead, they're like, ooh, there's cuss words. I can get them suspended. That's, That's what it was. Be what That's, it is. That, it went through their head. It can't be. I just read that. Oh, I can't believe I just read that. I can't believe I just no, read it, that. No, it, it went through It went through their head. How dare hey, hey, I can get them. I can get them. I can turn them into Facebook. I can the get them suspended. Garrity. Right, I can the get them blue language. And they went and did it. I'm never going to find out who did it. could be somebody in the chat room. Thank, who knows? Thank who knows? God. I mean... Like you said, you got like three times as many people on yours than I got on mine. But, uh, you yeah. know, I don't have a website to promote mine, so that's why. But, uh, anyways, um, I guess one of those extra five, six thousand people that I don't yeah, have that you do have, have, one of those has got to be the one because I cuss like a fucking sailor on my Facebook and I've never gotten it may a not warning. Be, it may not nothing. just be, yeah, I, I think you can cuss on Facebook, but. The way that the email was, I hope you die of cancer, I think is probably what Facebook, you know, had, yeah, had but said. Well, they said it about whoa. you. You didn't say somebody, you didn't, I know. you didn't say, I, I hope you die of cancer. Somebody said that about you. I know. You got suspended because somebody wished you to I die? I contacted Facebook and explained the situation and said, hey, listen, I don't think this is right that I'm being suspended. Is there what I was doing. Um, yeah, is there an actual person that talks to you, or is there a generic default email? It's a generic them? default. So you try to deal. respond to a generic. Right, fucking right. I never got a thing. response uh, back right. from, from them. But so, anyways, I'm suspended until uh, <laughs> I'm suspended until uh, Friday evening, and then I'll be back on Facebook. I'm on Twitter, uh, Twitter.com/slash Ryan Clark WZR. All the updates that you guys normally saw on my Facebook page, I'm just doing them on Twitter yeah. for the Andrew next website. Week. Right. Hey, I'm trying week, to help so. you with right, the, the right. raw and the tonight. You hooked it up. I appreciate it. Trying, yeah, and TNA pay per view and stuff. But Twitter.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. Twitter.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. Just like Facebook, you can go on there, you can add me, you can follow me, do what you gotta do. And all the links and stuff I'm putting them up, up on there. But um so Friday evening I'll uh, I'll be back about eight or nine o'clock on uh, on Friday. Now, let's get into uh some pro wrestling here. Actually, you know what? Let's get the plugs out of the way. Then we're gonna talk uh hardcore road trip and extreme rising. Yes. All the drama, then we're going to get into Monday Night Raw for hour one. We'll continue that into hour numero dos. Be taking your live phone calls. Two for don't, you who don't speak Spanish. Don't think we're going to be doing rapid fire. Um, we need a longer cord. The cord is right there. It's about three or four feet away from where I needed to be. So if I could reach over here and... If we didn't have that fucking Holy window man. and that air conditioner right there, we could move the whole thing over, but we can't because I know. we can't put the background up over I know. there. I'd need about three or four more feet, and then we could uh, we could do the rapid fire and everything you else. Know what we could do? That. Switch it around to that wall. That would be perfect. And then we could plug it in right there. Yes. Let's do that next We're week. We're going to do that next I'll week. Move it Absolutely. Right. We're going to do that next Maybe there's week. That Fucking, uh, what do you call that? The temperature controller for the. No, but it would be here. It'd be behind. Would your... the plug reach? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it all the way over that there. Table. Okay. Perfect. We'll be perfect. All right, we'll do that. We'll switch it. We'll do that. And nobody will even know the difference. No, it'll be a fucking right. bunch of shirts and us sitting here. 
We'll do that next week, no All doubt. Right. That's All a good right. idea. All right, um, so the official website, the official home. What's Rock that? stars are full of good ideas. <laughs> they write music that Reference makes the world number happen. four. Is that four? <laughs> I don't know what All it right. is. <laughs> but uh, the official home, the official website <laughs> of WZR TV Tuesdays, WZRonline.com. Uh, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as well. Go to Facebook.com slash WZR Army, YouTube.com slash WZR Archive, and we are on Twitter as well. Just go to WZR online.com top navigational bar drop down menu it's got all the links to facebook twitter and youtube wzronline.com the official home of wzr tv tuesdays is navigational a word i was gonna say i i didn't i thought you were gonna catch me on that okay i, I did I need a bite of pizza yeah, there's a bite of pizza <coughs> a bite I mean, you said no one bite. you gotta take the one i already bit out of mm -hmm. you sick fuck uh yeah navigational i don't think so Good shit. Top navigation bar. Mm. Okay. That's my opinion. Anyway. Um, Actually, it's facts. I think Merriam Webster confirmed it like 7,000 years ago. Or Webster something. Dictionary. Yeah, whenever he wrote the dictionary. Is that Merriam? Merriam. How do you know that? Merriam? It used to say it on the cover of every dictionary. Merriam Webster's Dictionary. Well, I always see Webster's Dictionary. I didn't know it was Merriam. Oh, you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Merriam? Nine out of ten people would know that, yeah. Nine out of ten people. If you know Webster's Webster, Dictionary, would know Nine Merriam. Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten, if they know Webster, they know it's Merriam Webster. I know Webster, but I didn't know it was Merriam. Merriam Webster. Is it a man or a woman? I don't know. Mm. Sounds like a man, Merriam. Merriam? Sounds like a woman. Yeah, it sounds like, like an old fucking 19 or uh, 1700s uh, fucking whatever. I anyway. learned something. Hey, like learn you. something new every day. You sure do. Yeah, and you're in From the rock stars. When you're in the company of rock stars, you're going to learn a whole fucking lot more than the average bear. <laughs> The average bear. <laughs> All right. Um. So, hardcore road trip and extreme rising. Last week, this is going to be good because I don't know. All I know is the basic gist, which was that people were fucked. But I don't know anything about anything, so I'm going to be informed. Like well, you know about know. extreme rising. Allow me to ask questions. Though. I'm going to pretend like I'm the audience listening right now because okay. I pretty much am. I don't know anything. So I'm on top of this. If you're in the middle of telling a story, allow me to interject when yes. I feel like. Wait, clear this up for me. Clear yes, that up sir. for me. Okay. Try to make. And it I'll his... represent the fans. Yeah. So. uh... Let's, let's hear the story. So, uh, last week I ran down that Extreme Rising promoter Steve O'Neill. Extreme Rising's an ECW reunion, reunion type of show. Company. So is Hardcore yeah. Road Trip. Tommy Dreamer's House of Hardcores. Yes. Another one. A lot of hardcores, right? Yeah. Hardcore Road Trip. People House don't realize that was a 90s thing. You know, right. there was Jerry Springer, there was Howard Stern, there was these shock things. And all right, all right. Kind of yesterday's news. Shock Jock. Yeah, Shock Jock, Howard Stern, Howard Shock Stern. TV, Jerry Springer. Yes, sir. Um, so, anyways, you know that the Jerry Springer show is still taped, going. Is taped in Stamford, Connecticut. I didn't. Know. Right down the road I from WWE headquarters, no. right? Um, Do you know Jerry Springer used to be like a mayor? And then he got. He, he, I don't know if he got kicked didn't out of Didn't he run for mayor? No, he was, mayor. He was mayor. mayor. He was either mayor, governor, or one of them political offices. He was, absolutely was. And okay. he got kicked out because <laughs> he saw a prostitute. But he paid her by way of a personal check, so they had proof. Ah! <laughs> so they had, they had Did he? <laughs> yeah. That's so awesome, man. That's awesome. <laughs> Stern had, right. the, had the hooker that he was banging on the show, and she told right. the story. And then he had Springer on. He had about. Springer's hooker on yeah. the show? Really? Yeah. That's I mean, awesome. he had anybody's hooker. Fucking, uh, what was that guy, Spitzer? Elliot. Elliot Spitzer. He had everybody's hooker uh, that, really? that's ever had like a controversy. But anyway, hardcore road trip. All right, so Steve O'Neill, Extreme Riser, you know, he had been Who's promoting. Steve O'Neill, the Extreme Rising promoter, he had been promoting all these Extreme thought, Rising events. I thought it was Shane Douglas. Shane Douglas used to be. Shane he Douglas was the person that invented, founded yes, uh, Extreme Rising. founder of Extreme Rising. He's gone. Steve O'Neill comes in and, and he takes over. So. Yeah. He's promoting these events. They're taking place in Philadelphia and somewhere else in, in Pennsylvania. It's a it's a weekend double shot. Okay. Okay. And uh, everything goes to shit. The talents are pulling out. This, that, and the other thing. The events wind up being canceled. Extreme Rising. A lot of guys are out of money. They're out of their weekend bookings yeah. that they had taken off because they were going to work for other promotions. Yes. So a lot of guys are, are pissed off. People are screwed on money. You know they're out on flights. Everything. These events wind up being canceled. So all these promotions start coming out. Uh, Matt Hardy's Omega promotion, who was running an event. Uh, uh, big time wrestling. Do you know what Omega stands for? I don't. I know it was an old promotion that the Hardy Boys. When had. they were kids. Organiz. Oh, let me try and remember this. Omega Organization of Modern Extreme Grappling Arts. 
Really? Omega. Look at you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, Big Time Wrestling, another promotion that was running some weekend events. They come out. Hardcore Road Trip as well. I got was an email. Is that Steve O'Neill or is that a different one? Hardcore Road Trip is a completely... Do we know the promoter's name? Because doesn't this come into play later? Yes, we do. Do we know the name? Mark Livingston. Mark uh, Livingston. Hardcore Road Trip? Yes. Mark Livingston. Okay, okay. So, in my email box, um, late last week, after it was announced that Extreme Rising is canceling their events, I get a press release from Hardcore Road Trip and Big Time Wrestling. Uh, BTR, Big Time Wrestling. Yeah. Is they, that uh, Detroit? BTW, my bad. Um, uh, Big Time Wrestling... Not sure. I think in the old days it was a territory big time wrestling. I think that was out of the choice, so maybe not. All right, anyways, go Okay, ahead. so I get these press releases where um, they're saying, you know, we know that fans are being screwed by Extreme Rising. And by the way, Extreme Rising comes out and tells their fans, hey, by the way, if you want your money back, contact your credit card. Yeah, you told us that last Go week. to the, go the to purchase, Ticketmaster and blah, 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 blah. Basically, I don't know how that works, by it's the way. All, it's anyways, all on them. Yeah. Don't don't contact like, us. Like I said last week, how do you go to Ticketmaster and say, hey, I bought a ticket to the show and they canceled You're it. Can very, I get my money back? Very, very Wouldn't Ticketmaster be like, no, that's it's, their problem. Why don't we got to give you money back? Ticketmaster, I believe, has a no-refund policy where if you... I don't know how it works. But, I don't either, yeah. So these other promotions come out, and they knowing that, listen, it's going to be difficult, and you're going to have to go through a long process to yeah. get your money back with these tickets. These other promotions come out, and they say, hey, if you bring your Extreme Rising ticket... Uh, to our event, we'll let you in for ten dollars yeah. or five dollars. Now this 50% was off. You told us last week the the guys that said if you bring your extreme rising ticket to us was that the hardcore road trip? That was big time wrestling. That was Omega, and that was hardcore road trip. And the hardcore road trip people end up screwing. People so too. hardcore road so trip. They tried to be nice. And so they, big time wrestling. Uh, 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 so uh, hardcore road trip in okay. the press release, and it came directly from Mark Livingston. I got an email. The promoter. It said from Mark Livingston yeah. in the email. Inside the email, he takes a shot at Steve O'Neill, the Extreme Rising promoter. Yeah. He says, "I can't believe what and then a, he went and did the what, same a thing. what a dirty I'm okay. getting it. Okay. What a dirty sc- what a dirty scumbag you know that this guy is. You know, everybody knew that this guy was an asshole, and you know that these events weren't going to go through. This okay. is what Mark Livingston said about, about Extreme Rising yeah. and Steve O'Neill." So he sends this press release, and we put it up on the website. Hey, discounted tickets, you know, take your Extreme Rising tickets to Hardcore Road Trip. So we get to Hardcore Road sucks. Trip. Real quick, because last week we're putting this guy over like, yo, what? A, he didn't have to do that. How does he benefit? He's right. losing money by doing this. Right. But he's actually, like, cares about the fans, cares about the... Uh, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the uh, the the cause, the movement. Right. We want to give you guys the old ECW old hardcore ECW, experience. We got Sabu, we got Ryan. Yeah, we want to give you that, that old experience. We, and we care about that enough that even though this has nothing to do with us, we're gonna let you. We're gonna honor your tickets to our competition. Correct. Correct. And lose money doing it because we want you to have your experience that we believe in. Exactly. So right. we get the hardcore but rising. Maybe not. In we the get end. the hardcore <laughs> rising over the weekend, right? Guys show up, you know, they're booked for flights. Now, some of these guys, and the smart move for indie wrestlers, because there's a lot of sick promoters out there yeah. that wind up picking guys pass. over, they get an upfront deposit yeah, where at they least say, half and half. you pay for my flight, you book my flight, you pay for my car, you yes. pay for my hotel, whatever else you I You pay need. for my expenses, that I'm way I'm not, if, if you cancel your show, I'm still paying. I don't make any money, but I didn't lose any money getting there. Correct. Okay. Correct. I'm not booking my own flights yeah. because of something goes now, wrong. Now, not all of them. And a lot of guys, a lot of guys Very ask for deposits up front. In addition to in transportation, yeah. they say, you at least got to pay me half of, yeah. half of the Brent money. Brent Flair was famous for always asking for advances. You got to have, you got to pay me at least some of the money up front so that if something goes wrong, at least I got some of my money. Yes. Uh, I have whatever. something to show for. So the guys show up at, at Hardcore uh, Wrestling and, and uh, Mark Livingston yes. and his wife. Are backstage. Everything, something. everything is fine. Yeah. Uh, about no, the day of the show. The day of the show. Okay. Mark Livingston and his wife <laughs> are backstage at the show. Everything is fine. The show goes off without a hitch. Oh, they all put the, the guy, show on. All the guys are working. Yeah, so wait, all the guys are oh, working. Oh, oh. Mark, Mark <laughs> Livingston and his wife. They're Yo, backstage. Yo, you're a good storyteller. He's, I, he's I forgot where this goes. He's okay. interacting with yeah, the talents. Yeah, yeah, about yeah. halfway through the show, some of the talents start hearing Mark Livingston. Is no longer here. He's disappeared. Yo, dude. 
you're a good fucking storyteller. I forgot, and now I just... So then, rumor starts going around the locker room that yeah. Mark Living... The show goes off without a hitch, he says, and now it... <laughs> rumor in the locker room is that That's Mark awesome. Livingston's wife, he suffered a heart attack backstage. Why this? Quote, unquote, heart attack. You'll find out in a second. Mark Livingston's <laughs> wife takes him to a hospital somewhere in the Toronto area. This was in Canada? This is in Canada. Um, wh- which, you know where? Which, I think Toronto. Toronto. Okay. Around Toronto. Okay. So, all the talents are like, well, wait a minute. Mark Livingston's gone. I haven't got my money. What the fuck is going on here? Wait okay. Yeah, wait a minute. So, they continue on with the show, and Stephen uh, DeAngelis, um, guy that used to help Paul Heyman book for ECW back in the day. I've Paul Heyman was the name. main booker. But Stephen, De- Stephen DeAngelis was like one of the main guys. Oh, Gabe Sapolsky was the guy that helped. Gabe was there. Gabe was in ECW. Steve DeAngelis. Stephen De- DeAngelis. Hmm. I've never heard of that name. Well. Okay. So he's there as Maybe well and guy. he's the one that had booked this show. Okay. So they continued on with the event. They get to the end of the show. Nobody's heard from Mark Livingston. They're trying to contact him. They're trying to contact his wife. Uh, everybody else, he's nowhere to be found. The locker room comes out to the ring. The whole fucking locker room. And these guys cut a promo and says, fuck Mark Livingston. Not only that, but Mark Livingston is going quick? by the name Mark Anderson to the talents. It's not even his real name. Uh-huh. So he's going by Mark Anderson. Well, he knew all along he was fucking him. Finds out why that it's he, Mark Livingston. Why did he do the uh, take your ticket sales? Anyways, um... So wait, can I ask you real know. quick? Why did he do it so that he could make money? Yeah, no, no. And then run he, off with he's it. He's not making money off other people's tickets that we're gonna honor. You know what I mean? He's it's still if they the come, money. if they come, they to still have to pay twenty five. They gotta so yeah. pay. It's only ten dollars off. Yeah, extra douchey because it's right. like yo, you thought we were gonna see it. You're not. We'll come to us. We'll take less money, but we'll. All right. So anyways. You said all the locker room goes out to the ring. They cut a promo. The Vito's out there. Them. Big Vito's out. Yeah, but Steven they go out. Trash them. Is At out this there. point. Because I don't know how far we get to uh, in the show. The show's over. I, no, no, I don't know how far we get into the story you're telling to where, mm-hmm. do what do we know? So, at this point, basically, the guys were told he was rushed to the emergency room for a heart attack. That's what they're So, called. did they know at this point that it was bullshit? Because why would they... Well, if they're it's thinking. True, they're thinking. If it's true, if it's true, why would they go out and talk shit? About a guy who could possibly be in the middle of dying right Heart now. Heart attack. So they must have had so words. They maybe this knew. Is, come on, this is BS. You know what I mean? This so you is, don't know the answer crap. to that question. Well, his wife okay. wasn't answering. All their phones were off. Nobody's answering phone calls. If, I, has something, if your sister's in the middle of a heart attack and I'm in the middle of doing WCR and I need to call you because I need a fucking a thing for the show here, the last thing you give a shit about is your internet show when your sister's on a table. That's true. You're right. You're knock right. on wood. Knock, they, you must know what have, I mean? they must have found out. So they must have had this some kind of knowledge. Some sort of. Otherwise, damn, that's pretty fucking cold. You know what? Now that I, I think somebody saw him. Somebody saw him backstage they, I think what I, very shortly after maybe, he disappeared. And you know more than me. Maybe I'm wrong on this. But didn't, didn't somebody hear that they caught him leaving without... They caught him leaving. He didn't leave no ambulance. Right, right, right. Somebody saw him he just left. get out and leave. He left. That's, I, I think Is you're that right. true? I think, I think you're right. Okay. Somebody saw but anyways, him. anyways, the guys go to the ring. They're trash. So they go to the ring. Vito's out there. Everybody else is out there. You know, fuck this guy. <laughs> I can't believe... That they would do this. What was the attendance for the show? Do we know that? A couple hundred. Approximately. Like six, seven hundred. Really? Like somewhere in there. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. That bad. The video that came out at the end showed yeah. the attendance well, at you, the end of the show. There okay, I didn't see people. the whole... All, all, you had to come in to see if it was Vito talking at the one point, and I just saw like a couple guys around ringside. It looked like a real empty right. house, but you're saying they did a wide shot and you could see... They didn't do a, oh, a wide shot, but you could tell. You could tell by the, the was, reactions of, okay. of the crowd. There was a couple hundred. At least a couple hundred. Right? Five, six... Somewhere around there, I would say. All I would right. say. Um, judging from the video that I saw on it. So, anyways, um, they they go and they cut this promo. You know, fuck this guy, this, that, and the other thing. Big Vito gets on the microphone and says, "Listen, we are across the border in Canada. If any of you guys have passports huh. that can help us get home, if anybody can help us, if you can, said. if you can give us a ride, we don't have our hotels paid for tonight. Vito's the one that us, said it." Vito's the one that, uh, Vito and then Steven DeAngelis at the end got back on there and said, if anybody can give us a ride home, 
uh, or at least across the border, we've got our passports, but it, you need to have a passport too. So if anybody is going back across the border to places that like so Detroit, sad. Detroit and Chicago and places like that, if you can help us out. So mm. it turns out that Big Vito and uh, Big Vito and um, um, and uh, who's who's the other, uh, Big Vito and somebody, Big Vito came out with a rant and said that they were given a ride back across the border and then slept on somebody's couch, a fan's couch. I had a question and a point to make. The question is, how did they get there? But they need a... Uh, a Their travel was paid thing. for getting there. Their travel was paid for getting it. So he booked the flight. So they arrived at an airport and what, they got cabs bringing them to the he building? He booked everything was fine. Everything? everything was fine up until about halfway through the event. He booked their flights. He gave a lot of guys down payments. Some guys were paid in full. Everything was fine, and then out of nowhere during the show, it's almost like he took the ticket sales money and pocketed it, the and then bounced, bounced off. So uh, everybody that got there, everything was fine. That's why they said, "Well, my hotel's booked. I'm there. He's got yeah, me a hotel." But how do they get? All right, let's say they flew. Okay. How did they get from the airport to the hotel, and now they need to ride back? They must have took a cab. Well, he, when they got to the airport, listen, the, Mark Livingston. He he booked their airfare. He booked their hotels. Everything was yeah, fine going that. into the event. So, but if they, they got to there, an airport to hotel, they had some kind of car. Either had a car right. or, or somebody like that. Right. Well, if they but had a car, why don't they have the car anymore to go home? After the event, you've got to call those people and you've got to pay them. The promoter, oh, okay. if he was there, would call and say, "Here's the money taken yeah, yeah, yeah. to the airport." Okay. Now, my Here's point this, that I was going to make. Hotel. Just a real quick comment, which is. God. We gotta, we gotta get through this. I know it's so off. goddamn sad. That could you imagine being at a wrestling show and the guys are like, "Guys, I need to ride home." I know that's what they were did. They were that's begging, a, and and it's not their fault. The it's this dirtbag Livingston. Yes, as far yes. as what you're saying, about, and I trust so, you. I trust you did your research, but like this dirtbag has these guys begging the fans to give them a to ride. To give them a home. ride back across the border. Mommy, can I have a ride home? Right. Yeah. You should call Vito and make a station wagon joke, dude. You should absolutely. <laughs> we All should, this Asian wagons, you know. Hey, I'm should. not trying to make light because that's a fucked up it's situation. It's a fucked up thing to but, do. So, anyways, as many times as he did the station so, wagon, I pow. Mark Livingston, who had sent me the press release, uh, I contacted him through email and I said, "Hey, listen, Mark, there are two sides to every story. I'm willing to give you the opportunity. Yeah. You know, I put this up on numerous websites. Then the video came out with everybody in the ring. I put that up. Uh, I contacted him at 9:30 a.m. on well, Sunday morning." No reply back. Right before the TNA pay-per-view started on Sunday night, I contacted him about 7.30 Eastern time. I contacted him a second <coughs> time, and I said, Mark, I said, listen, I'm giving you one more opportunity here. Can you send us some sort of statement, anything, your side of the story? Never heard back. Monday comes along. Yes, All of a sudden, yes. Monday, the Facebook page for Hardcore Road Trip and Mark Livingston's personal Facebook Please. page, gone. The same wow. thing that happened to Extreme Rising the week wow. before. They deleted their social media pages, wow. they deleted their Facebook, they deleted their Twitter. Yeah. The same thing that happened, wow. and, and the promoter has gone AWOL, okay? So, yeah. Steve O'Neill, nowhere to be found gotcha. for Extreme Rising. Mark Livingston, gotcha. nowhere to be found. Won't respond to my emails. His phone is turned off, disconnected. I guess. Now these guys are calling. It's disconnected, no longer in service. Nobody can get a hold of them. I guess my question that I was going to ask you is now irrelevant. Because because if that is all true, Facebook, Twitter's canceled, phone's cut off, all this and that. Phone's disconnected. That's what I mean. Disconnected. If, it's, uh, if it's not going through, uh, bottom line is if they cancel all that shit, turn this off, turn right. it off. My question was going to be, I mean, if he, if it's true, let's just go by the theory that he really had a heart attack, he's in the hospital. Okay. You would be able to call the hospital and find and out. say, hey, is this guy in the fucking hospital? Nobody, and nobody has heard anything from So, him. the dirtbag just took the money and he ran. He took the money and ran. What a dick. What a and dick. Extreme Rising did pretty much the same thing, although they didn't hold events and get tickets. They didn't take the money and run. Like they that. just canceled the show and fucked everybody out of Correct. money. Yeah, Correct. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. I have contact. I contacted Mark Livingston again today. It's such His a email still works. If you guys want to email, it's hardcore road trip at at gmail.com hardcore road trip at gmail.com if you guys want to lash into this motherfucker we that's, need the army to fucking load up man. And, and that's why we call him an army if you that, got dipped on ticket money I'll give his even email. if you it's, didn't it's, 
Even if you didn't, we round up the army for causes every once in a while. This is as good as causes any. Go yeah. email and it'll be like, yo, you guys are a fucking as scumbag. Of, as of a couple hours ago. Know, you know what I mean? As of a couple hours ago, the email still worked. So, Hardcore let them know, let them know, know if, if you were somebody that got dicked on, on tickets or, you know, went to the event and felt feel that you got fucked over, even though they put it on an event. It's, it's hardcoreroadtrip at gmail.com. Guy's name is Mark Livingston. Uh, Steve O'Neill as well. Can't remember his email off the top of my head, but um, both of these guys are douchebag, dickhead promoters that have totally screwed talent. Think about it. I mean, you go to an event, you expect to be paid. You, you fly in, you do all this stuff, and then you get fucked out of your money fucked after up. work. The guys in the main event were blading like crazy, man. They were a bloody mess after it was yeah, over. Yeah, imagine it somebody was... gets hurt during the show, too. Man. Like, Nobody's man. there. Nobody's there. I mean, so... so like, email him. He's, he's the douchebag. I'm still and it's such a roller coaster him. thing because they went from, we're the saviors, now that Extreme Rising just got canceled, we're going to come and save the day. Exactly. Take your ticket, we'll give you a discount, exactly. this and that. So they go from looking like the heroes Correct. Correct. to an even lower form of scum Correct. than the Extreme Rising Steve O'Neill fucking jerk off guy. Absolutely. Damn. Absolutely. What a story. Get to our live chat room wzronline.com slash chat wzronline.com Slash chat, get in there. We have about 15 minutes. Let's get into Monday Night Raw. We'll take we got a 15 uh, minutes. quick commercial break. 15 minutes until Oops. break. Well, that's what um, I mean. That's a good story, though. Yeah, I mean, was well worth a lot of people, yeah. I know some of you guys follow the indies, some of you don't. See, I don't. So that heads. was all, for the most part. Was I it all right? Did I do I was, right? I, was, I was with you the whole time. I'm going to bite a pizza. I was with you the whole time. You owe me a piece of pizza, by the way. Now. No, I don't. I took one bite. You need a big bite, and now you take another bite. They're little fucking pieces. Well, if I owe you a whole piece, I'm yeah, taking the whole goddamn piece, thing. Motherfucker. Mm. Well, no and then you left me with all the crusty ones. What do you mean? Well, like, you took the middle part of the pizza, so that the ones are out there. You want to trade? I still got pieces here. I don't like crust. I'll trade. I'll trade. You give a fuck. I just grabbed the first six pieces. Oh, you give a fuck. I give a fuck. Bitch. I don't give a bitch. fuck. Alright, <coughs> so Monday Night Raw. Fucking guy. There's fucking guy. Might as well call him Mark Livingston. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> call me a it. rock star. Bro. You're Steve O'Neill then. Get out of here. Fucking parmesan cheese off me, mate. Throwing that shit at me. What'd you think of the opening segment of Monday, Monday Night, Night Raw? Raw? Well, real quick before we get to the particulars, what'd you think of the show? Running up on my toe. Yeah, what'd you think of the show in general? I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was pretty good. Now, I've heard feedback. Mm hmm. Feedback. I don't know why I said it like that. I've heard feedback where people didn't think it was that good. I thought it was a pretty damn good show. And you know, like, like last week, the big joke was Boone was stressed out, play by play, he's bitching, he thought the show stuck, but it turned out maybe. Yeah, I don't miss week. Yeah, that's my point. I'm getting to it. But I was stressed out, and then when reviewing the show after the fact, when I'm not stressed and in the middle of play by play, I was like, oh, they started a lot of different new directions and did some cool stuff here and there. It was a decent show. Mm. This week, I was fucking losing my mind. You know, with play by play and all the goddamn announcements they made that I had to write up during commercial, like I literally didn't get to do anything. Smackdown main event, main event, but main this event for about, about three and a half hours. hours. I yeah. know. I know. But, uh, by the way, uh, they're taping on uh, WWE Smackdown tonight in uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Yes. Real and quick, by the way, while they're airing that live, they're um, uh, TNA is uh, is taping Impact tonight in Orlando, Florida. Well, they already well. taped this Thursday, last night, and the week after. No, half of the week. Part of it. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Listen, for uh, first, tonight's tapings, yeah. if you don't want to hear, this is going to air in about three weeks from now. Yeah, about three weeks from now. This would um, be the other half of May 8th? I think it's going to be the start of May 15th. 15th. Okay. I think so. Uh, MVP comes out. Basically, Eric Young is going to defend the TNA World Heavyweight title on Impact. We'll give you the thumbs up when we're done doing sports. On a week-to-week -week basis, yeah, yeah. correct. Well, uh, I wrote, as I was told from a, a guy that was there, that yeah, it was basically said that he's going to he's going to be a fighting champion. He's going to defend his title every week on Just the like show. Just like Dana Bryan, right? Yeah, yeah. Fighting champion. And they're literally copying it. And, and they, interestingly and enough, right. I was watching that pre-show of Sacrifice on Sunday mm -hmm. night, which we should probably talk about Sacrifice a little bit oh, um, right. in hour two. TNA, yeah. Um, during the pre-show, the before the bell thing, they just kept putting on a loop. It was a ten minute thing. Ten minutes like, like before five the minutes. bell is what yeah, they yeah, call yeah. it. Right. So I said before the bell, and uh, one of the comments he made was, "This was the greatest two weeks of my life." Right. I, I remember who posted a tweet and said, Bryan "This was the, the greatest honeymoon. two weeks of his right. life." Right. With the honeymoon, right with thing. WrestleMania, and then the honeymoon. They're the literally wedding. copying. They're everything. copying everything. Jeez, uh, well, it's working for WWE, so why not try and team? I mean, they copy ideas from each other. Both companies go back and forth. You can't say that, yeah. you know, there's been a... But this is but, um, blatant. 
So, uh, so at the uh, Impact tapings tonight, this will be, the, I believe, the start of the show on May 15th. Uh, Maybe. MVP comes out and uh, is going to reveal Eric Young's challenger for the TNA Slammiversary pay-per-view. Yeah, the next pay-per-view. Right. When he is says, that? June? It's a month and a half. May or June? Month. I think June. June? Okay. I want to say June 19th. June 19th comes to, uh, is it June 19th? I have 19th? no idea. You can't check right there, do you? Sure I can. Oh, the Why can't calendar, I? okay. June, April, May, June 15th. The 15th or the 22nd is the uh, first. Oh. Um, 21st. So, 21st. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Actually, it would be 22nd. It's the 22nd. Well, wait, wait, wait. Bring that back up. I just saw Bring it back up. It's the 22nd. Bring it back up. Oh, I Lord. saw 15 and 21 hey. under it. From 15th to the 27th. I know, that's my days. point. It's but, seven so days, So it can't correct? be the 15th then. Go to June. It's the 22nd. 15th, 22nd. 15th, 22nd. All right, yeah. Fucking A, man. All right, so, so when Whoops. I was right. Hey, listen. Well, I'm right, sorry right, to make hey. mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. I was right. The rock star was wrong. The fucking job of Tony Ryan Clark was right. I want to hear you say You heard I, the name Ryan Clark was right. It. Say, I, Matt Boone. Repeat after me. I'm not repeating that. Repeat after me. We're running out of time. I, Matt Boone. I, Matt Boone. Were you going to protest? I, Matt Boone, was wrong. That's all I want out of you. We're not moving on. The rock star was wrong. I, Matt Boone, the was jobber right. Ryan not Clark one. was right. We will sit here all goddamn night until I hear I, Matt Boone, was wrong. You're lucky I care about these fans. I'm Matt Boone was wrong. Hey! Right. Woo! Can we do a show? Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah, buddy. <laughs> All right. So um, listen. So anybody crops that out and makes that a sound drop, I'm <laughs> fucking flying to their house and punching them in the face. So, so anyway, we had uh, so MVP comes out. He's going to yes. reveal the uh, the challenger for uh, the uh, Slammiversary pay per view, right? Yes. Um, and out of nowhere, he says, "I'm going to do it next." I'm going to make sure you're wrong by the end of the show. By the way, <laughs> about something. And so I better hear some. Uh, I Ryan Clark so solemnly <laughs> swear to tell the truth. Matt Boone's fucking right yeah it's happening bro <laughs> so anyway he says uh i'm gonna reveal uh your challenger for tna slam reversary next week uh eric young says slam okay yeah. he says uh okay and out of nowhere mvp whacks him from behind hits him and says see ya at slam reversary so mvp did a double cross little heel turn little heel turn and uh took out eric young so it's going to be mvp against eric young for the tna world heavyweight title at the slam anniversary pay-per-view all, right. all right monday night raw from last night the, bottom, it up. the whole Top point i was getting to was that i was more frustrated this week than last week and last week i thought the show sucked because i was so frustrated upon reviewing it it was actually a decent show mm -hmm. I was just so clouded by being angry that I thought it wasn't that good. This right. week, I was even more angry than usual because uh -huh. I was just so far behind yeah. and having trouble. But um, I thought it was a good show. Right. I would yeah. say... Go B home show for extremes. Yeah, I would say B minus. B minus? Yeah. I'll go with that. Maybe a solid B. It was, I'll go with it that. It was pretty good. I'll go with B minus. And I've seen a lot of negative feedback, which makes me... Like, well, really? Like, right. I thought it was pretty good. I thought the opening stuff uh, great. was... Uh, but they had the cage. John Cena was in the cage. They're gonna do uh, Cena versus Bray yes. Wyatt at the uh, Extreme Rules pay per view in a uh, in a cage match. Uh, so they had the cage down. John Cena cuts promo about Bray Wyatt, and you know, yeah, yeah. it was basically he was in a was, serious voice, and he was talking about how the fan. Why? Right. Why? Why would you do that to me? You last got the week? raw right there, by the way. Well, I know. References, but but uh, no. Why, why would you do that to me? Why would you guys feed me the lions? To really, you know. Yeah. Three on one, because last week the fans got to vote on the app. Right. Uh, either he faced one guy, Luke Harper, two guys, Harper and Rowan, or three guys, Harper, Rowan, and Wyatt. Right. They voted by major like largely voted for uh, three on one. And uh, he's been doing these subtle teases. I said that last week. At a heel turn. Right. But by the end of the show, which we'll get into as we get 
uh, into it more, he ends up he saying... He came back to a baby. Yeah, and surprised. he posted a tweet after the show that said, you know, I'm always going to be me no matter what. Whatever he said, so right, he ain't right. turning. But I don't think so, because not it, it involves merchandise salesmen. It involves little business. Kids, little business, yeah. that's exactly... Which, little kids love... I'm already calm it. about this, because Hulk Hogan was the same thing in WWE, that you can't turn him heel. Right. Can't do it. The red and yellow, the Hulkamania shirts, the headbands, the, all that shit sells. Right. Can't turn him heel. Guess what happens? Goes to WCW, does the same stuff, blah, 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 it's not working that well. Mm -hmm. Turns heel mm -hmm. after Austin 316. This was the whole NWO After thing, Austin right? 316 shirts. What's, at high school or whatever we were at the time, what shirts do you remember seeing on people more than any other other than Hogan Austin Hogan and Hogan and NWO. And NWO. W right. Oh, right. after right. Austin 316 and maybe damn near as much, and. W-O. Those see shirts. The black and white t-shirts. Absolutely. Yep. So just yep. because, oh, well, we can't turn him heel because we'll lose merchandise sales. The flip side of that coin is maybe Cena, and he's got good verbal ability. Well, Cena's not Hogan, and it's not the NWO. Either, no, but, but you don't know what he could be as a heel. He you do. And he's right. a very good talker. Mm -hmm. You know, he's he's got that fucking street thing, whatever the fuck. But Think he about can, it. He can, take his, he can take his verbal ability. Right. And his ability is a very charismatic performer, which I don't think, even if you don't like him, you wouldn't disagree that he's got good verbal skills, right. good charisma. If you channel that in the right character and make him a heel, and it's the right kind of heel, think about this. Can, he could catch on with the teens as opposed to you see, the baby face that catches on with the kids and the, and the women. Absolutely. You see children with the John Cena, you know, stronger, better, yeah. believe Same yeah. way you would see children right. in Hulkamania Check shirts. Check this out. What if, what you if, went from seeing children in Hulkamania shirts, right. baby face, to teens and 20-year-old somethings, and NWO shirts. Well, that's what and I'm saying. And guess what? Those what if, NWO shirts if, if sold you were as to, much or more. If you were, if you were to turn John Cena heel, okay, you've yeah. got all the kids right now, this and guy right here. they're all buying. They're all buying John Cena. Yes. Their parents are buying them the John Cena Cena merchandise. Let's say you turn them heel, and then you market a T-shirt with John Cena's face in the front, with a big circle and an X or something over it, and then on the back something with Cena sucks. You would get the adults instead of the kids buying that. You would get a large number of adults that would go out because they've got that yeah. t-shirt you could kind of counter it where kids I are think the buy more that. effective thing not not to get kids to try and buy a I hate John Cena shirt it would be more of make sure he's the right kind of heel and try and get him over right. with the teens right, and right. your right. age kind of I guys agree. I agree. which is a difficult task because people our age have a have a thing where they just hate that guy right Hogan was right. like way over and then you know started going down because it was like you know same old shit same old shit change, right you know, right, right. Um, so, what did you Ooh. think? And then we'll go to the break. We'll come back. We'll finish up Monday Night Raw. We're going to be taking a live phone calls. You were right, well, by the way. I'll say that one. Those. I won't What's say, that? I met Boone Ryan Clark. I was right. Last on. week, you said, I think they're going to do a new verse each week on that song. He's right. got the whole world in his hand. Yeah, Last they night, did. they pretty they much did. sang the whole thing. Right. Um, um, yeah. yeah, the, uh, so, you know, John <laughs> is talking about Bray Wyatt's message, this, that, and the yeah. other thing, and how it's crazy. Well, his initial weird. thing was, why would you turn your back on me, fans? Why would you send me to the wolves? This right. and that. So he's, you know, so, his, big, his beef is with, why are you going to follow this guy if, if he if he gets if he gets over on me and, and he escapes the cage? His message he's, is, is, he's right. going to, he's, nobody in the world can stop him, kind of thing, you know. Right. And that so, leads to, you the, know. Uh, yeah. I call it the Wyatt family cut in. I never know what right. to call that little thing. So the lights go out and you hear you hear a little kid starts it out. Uh, yeah, the that's whole, right. I forgot about got that. The whole There's one world. single kid singing. One single kid sings, and then uh, the lights uh, pop on. Bray he's Wyatt coming comes out. out. He's, co he's got the lantern, and he starts singing the whole world. It is. Have you ever noticed, by the way, got the whole world? Milwaukee, we're here, or whoever he's at. Right. It's it's a fire lantern. Mm -hmm. He blows it out when he comes out. It's a fluorescent light is it? lantern. Is ah, I didn't... You know and what? somehow yeah. he still... He blows that uh, out, even though it's on fire. Uh, yeah. Mm. But anyway. So anyways, this this entire choir, who is a high school choir, we found yes. out via Twitter. Local. Uh, they start choir, singing yeah. along with Bray Wyatt, and Bray Wyatt and was changes. was spoiler. If we would have known to follow these little jerk-off choirs' Twitter, no, they, ended they up said way, before, earlier way, way before the show, right, yo, we're going right. to go raw singing. Or so, whatever uh, they said. so Bray switches up the words, and he says... Uh, We've got, We've got the monster here. Yeah, he and tells the, the kids, all right, guys, how about we got the whole C Nation? We got the whole C Nation. You know? Right. Or whatever he was saying. But yeah. So then he wraps it up with this this evil laugh, you know, that he does. Yeah, he's singing, and it's right. Well, here's what happens. They all come down. They're all singing. They're all in black. Uh, 
kind of like the Scream mask but without the mask. Right. Like Scream movies, it's all big black cloaks or whatever you call them. Mm-hmm. And uh, they all circle the ring and this and that. I mean, they, they come down the ramp together. But uh, they all circle the ring and the lights go out again. And they come when back. When they come back they on, everybody's the, uh, wearing the sheet the masks. Mask. And right. all the kids are around the ring in the sheet masks except for one. Right. Who's sitting on Bray's lap and he's rocking right. in his rocking chair with the kid in the sheet mask. Right. And that's when he does the laugh. They, they do the whole laugh and then... <laughs> And, and the lights yeah, go the out and they, they go to a commercial break. Ah, that was awesome, man. That whole segment, I thought it was, I thought cool. it was great. And I've heard man. negative feedback that, about that, too. I loved it, man. It I was thought, different. Me too. Not only that, but people don't realize, think about this. You're out there in front of 10,000, 15,000 people, and you're cutting a promo like that. Bray Wyatt, in the role that he is in, can cut one hell of a promo. Hell think yeah. about how difficult that is. You're out there, I, I understand he's an entertainer, he's an actor, this is what he's trained to do, this is this is his job, yeah. but that is so difficult to put on that laugh, you know, that evil laugh. and to A fake laugh, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. And the Try to laugh it, right now like you're really laughing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah, yeah, I can't do it either. It's so and I'm a fucking rock star, so what does that tell you? <laughs> So for him to be out there in front of 10,000, 15,000 people, you know, and, and, and to do that and know that millions are watching you at home yeah, on television. And it's got, he's, he's got to hold the laugh. Like, like, it's not like a quick laugh. No, he's got to laugh for like 20 seconds. <laughs> Kane does it too, man. <clears throat> Kane does yeah, it Kane's too. Kane's good. Too. Right, right. Yeah. Kane's Bray, more of, oh, 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 oh. Right. He's like the evil laugh. Bray, Bray is awesome on the stick, man. He's very he good. Is, he is really, really good. Although there's so, an right. argument to be made that an effective promo get you hyped up for a match or get you hyped up for something. Right. Nine times out of ten, nine people out of ten don't know what the fuck he's talking about half mm. the time. Mm. So it, it sounds cool, the presentation is cool, it's entertaining, mm. but at the end of his promo you're like, God, I can't wait to see that fight. Right. Not yeah. so much. All right, yeah. we're, uh, we're going to take a great, great promo still. Great promo. We should talk about that list WWE made too. After what the break, list? the 50 best talkers list. Oh, yeah, Dusty yeah. Rhodes. I thought Dusty he was, was joking at first. Mm-mm. I thought he was joking. and he. Well, was, he said he uh, was. When did he, he say came out was? with another promo and said, oh, I was just uh, dicking around. Bullshit. Which is bullshit. Get out of here. Yeah, of Anyways, we're going to take a. He uh, was ranked number break. five. Five, I agree How could you with bitch that? about I don't agree with that. Guys, the 50 best of yeah, all time. Know, Rock and Austin are clearly ahead of him. Uh, no. Austin? Ahead of Dusty? All about Austin. Austin. I Austin, Austin was right there Rock. with him. Austin. You weren't Austin around for Rock. Dusty in his prime. Bobby Heenan was up there. Dusty in his Bobby? prime. Bobby Heenan was like three or four. No, he like, was ahead of Dusty. He was like seven or eight. Really? Or he wasn't eleven ahead of Dusty. or something right, right there. Okay. Yeah. No, he was top right. ten. But yeah, like eight. Take a quick commercial break. We'll come back. Okay. We'll uh, we'll finish that up. We'll talk more about that list, the best talkers list that WWE released. They also released a uh, hardcore wrestlers as well. They put seven today. Yeah, New Jack 10. was not yesterday, but uh, Sabu well, New yeah, Jack yeah. was on there. Uh, Mick Foley was number one, which. That. You got to why it's the yeah, hey, buddy. Listen. All right, we're uh, taking a quick commercial break. You're listening to WZR TV Tuesdays sure. with this rock star right here, rock star Matt, Matt Boone and Ryan Clark. We'll okay. be back right after this. One more hour. Uh, a little beer got you got there. Yeah, little. <laughs> <laughs> it rolls on a nicely face. That's way. why I put the drink in there. As he's got three beers in front of him right now, but um, stop. You stop. There's three beers right there. Four. You if, you count, if you count the cup, well, like, piece of pizza. Try and make sure we're loaded. No, <laughs> get your own. <laughs> By the way, somebody ate a piece of yours, unless it was you. Uh, I ate one. Okay. Um, what was I saying? No, when we first met, I was what two sixty. Yeah, two fifty. Yeah, 260. the long hair, long hair, big Scruffy beard. I'm talking two hundred and sixty pounds. Ugly some bitch. I'm afraid I'm headed towards that again. Oh, no, you gotta, you gotta, I gotta drink start. it. Luckily, that pool's opening soon. I'll get some. I'm a good swimmer, so I'll start mm-hmm. swimming every you got day. Got the women out there. They ain't gonna like that beard. No, they ain't gonna I like gotta, that beard. Get rid of that shit. Man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We gotta uh, get into Monday Night Raw, finish it up. We did the uh, the opening segment. God do damn, twelve minutes ball? after the hour. Yeah, I know. We might have to go a little long. <laughs> Smackdown's on the, uh, uh, they're in Kansas City tonight, which is a one hour delay. They haven't even started it. They just, they're doing the opening uh, right. promo segment right now. We gotta go so, a little late then. Mm, a little bit. We gotta give the people a show, man. Well, we'll give them a show. We barely started Raw. They're gonna get the show. Uh, Monday Night Raw rating rooms. came out. It was a uh, 3.25, rounded up to a yeah. 3.3. That's way up from last really week's 2.97. Really good. Uh, 3.0 last week in a. What do you attribute uh, that to? Just. 
Extreme Rules on Sunday. And it's got to be Extreme Rules on Sunday. I mean, that's part of it, but I don't think that explains Were there any much. NBA or NHL? Yeah, playoffs were on last night. I never too. know the competition yeah. stuff. I don't watch TV, so. But, um, yeah, that was a good number. Yeah, very good number, very man. Good number. That it bounced up. I mean, I mean, put it this way. Lot. What was the the uh, go home for WrestleMania? It was like three five, right? Three, three five. Yeah, three, it was it was low. It, it was, was low. maybe three six, three seven. Yeah. I thought it was three five. How about uh, they they actually uh, came out on Raw last night, confirmed that uh, Directv and Dish Network are not going to be carrying Extreme Rules. And yeah. Today, it was announced that uh, AT and T. Um, AT and T Uverse. Yes. Yeah, right. Said that uh, right. they're not carrying it either. Time War is probably next. You would think Time War is next. A, they have a conference call on Thursday. Uh, Their first they, quarter conference right, call. They so do. they're going to have to explain to the investors, like, oh, yeah, no, because they're going to be down. Thursday is going to be a very busy... You know how um, yeah. once, you know, four times a year where they do the first quarter, second Quarterly, quarter, third quarter, yeah. fourth quarter, they do the conference calls where the shareholders and the investors and everybody else is there, and you guys see all that financial stuff they that run out up on the website? Yeah. Thursday morning, you guys are going to see that. All those financials, uh, you know, DVD sales and traffic number, Paper all views, that stuff. Yeah. It's going to be up there on uh, on Thursday morning when they hold that, uh, that call. So it's going to be busy on uh, on Thursday. Go ahead, take it. <clears throat> Caller, you're live on WZR TV. What's up? Hey, what's going on, guys? How you doing, man? All right. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard about the MVP thing yet. Yeah, we talked about it in uh, our numero uno, where he, uh, he double-crossed that. Uh, for you guys that don't speak Eric Spanish. Young, right? Yeah. yeah, I think that that is like the stupidest thing. If TNA has Dixie heel, now MVP heel, that's retarded. Yeah, and, um, is this Cali? This isn't Cali, is it? No, I think it's Cali. Nah, that's what it is. Yeah, no, no. You, you, oh, is it? You, it's, I don't know. But I thought it, he said it. You it? sound familiar. That's my bad. It is uh, It is a little bit weird, man. You know, MVP comes in as, you know, uh, a... Babyface authority figure. A babyface authority figure. Yeah. And then out of nowhere, you know, he double-crosses uh, Eric Young. That's perfect sense. Uh, hopefully, I mean, let's hope that they run with Eric Young, you know, have Eric Young hold the title for at yeah. least a decent amount of time. Put it this you way. Can't, you don't when Daniel off. Bryan loses it, a week later Eric Young loses <laughs> probably, it. Probably, <laughs> probably, right? But, uh, yeah, no, I, I didn't, uh, to be honest with you, I didn't see that coming um, until I read the, uh, the Impact tapings tonight. I didn't so. see it coming now, but I knew that was coming. And yeah. I don't even watch TNA. Of course, eventually, if you build up a guy as the authority figure, babyface, helping everybody, eventually... Well, he's it's almost like Daniel Bryan's been feuding with Triple H and Stephanie McMahon on yeah. WWE television, the authority figure there, and then TNA, basically wow, I the didn't same think thing. Of that. So now Daniel Young feuding with wow. the authority figure over on Impact as well. <laughs> it's, it's almost an exact ripoff it really of what is. WWE's doing, you know? Anything else, bro? Uh, one more thing. What, what are the chances we see uh, Ambrose drop the title tonight and uh, Brie Bella versus Stephanie at payback? Oh. You know what? Brie Bella versus Stephanie is even more interesting than the uh, Ambrose thing that he just mentioned. Thanks for the call, by the way. Um, we should know. Is main event over yet? It would be. It, yeah, yes. I didn't read the results. So he did uh, not win the. Uh, we don't have it in the check. Oh, you read them? He did not. Okay, win so the, the chances are zero because he didn't. He didn't uh, lose the title. Let's well, something's going down on SmackDown. You said well, he didn't win the title. I thought the main event. Main event was Sheamus against. It is. Uh, it is. Well, they didn't announce Dean Ambrose. Yeah, uh, SmackDown. Uh, it, was, uh, it was one on three. It was a uh, oh one on three. You're right. Yeah. So we yeah, don't. But know. that's SmackDown, not main event. Right, you're right. right you're right. I was right. confused. Um. Okay. So we'll find out. I don't think but, um, Ambrose drops the uh, the title tonight. I wouldn't be surprised if he did. Really? No. No. Wait. It's it's Ryback right Axel. And who it's else? It's right before the pay per view. Ryback right Axel. Who else? Uh, Del Rio. I could see somebody from Evolution screwing him. Yeah, you know, but I can't see Ryback Lax or Axel taking the title. So no, I think, yeah, I think Rollins Rio. and Reigns come down to make the save or something like that. Uh, you know, I mean, he's going to be down, and then Rollins and Reigns are somehow going to be involved in that. Maybe Evolution runs out as well, and you have like a, a big Shaws, brawl going yeah. into the Extreme Rules. I don't think they're going to do a title change this close to Extreme Rules. You're only going to be two days, three days away from yeah. Extreme Rules. On Friday night, SmackDown. But it would build more heat. Like, yo, Evolution cost it. He cost it. And then fucking Evolution yeah. guys cost him his title. And then right going into the pay-per-view, the title is, is all I'm 50-50 on that. I don't I know don't which way so. to think. I don't think so. I don't your, think your scenario makes more sense, but there's a part of me that really thinks that, you know what, they're going to screw him. Now, I'm looking at his opponents, because if they're going to screw him, who do they pass it off to? Del Rio, you would They're think. not giving it to Ryback or Axel because no, they're a tag no, no, no. team. So it's got to be Del Rio 
Del Rio's not doing nothing. He could use a little something. That something, makes right. sense. What do you think about uh, Curtis Axel came out and revealed the, uh, they're, axe they're asking <laughs> the axe hole, yeah, right? Instead of asshole. By the way, I loved Paul Heyman's joke last night. Ready? Knock, knock. Who's there? It's an old joke. Oh, knock, knock. I said who's there? Mike. Mike who? My client, Brock Lesnar, yeah. defeated The Undertaker. I like it. There's my cunt. You can do with that sometimes. There's a bunch of things that right, people have done. I like yeah. it. Anyways, uh, let's get back to you. Did you watch the uh, great debate from SmackDown last night? I didn't. You said you were going to watch that. I you watched it on YouTube last you? night. Was yeah. it good? Yeah. Mm. Mm. I, I think they did it almost, night, almost like a shoot because... Like, Coulter was, like, trying to fight to get his words in. And Vicky's like, no, no, you're done. I, but wait, let me finish. You know. Right, right, right. And then Heyman, Heyman would very, very proudly, like, when he gets cut off, even if he's in mid-sentence, he goes, yeah, stop. Yeah, he would just be like, fine. Happens all to right, me all the time. I get cut off, and I just, okay. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we, do, we were just talking about uh, Ry Baxel, right? We had the uh, tag team titles were on the line here. It was uh, Ry yeah. Baxel against... I'll uh, go ahead and say it one more Usos. time for you. You were right, I was wrong. Yes, sir. That's three I points. Thought, I today. thought uh, I thought for sure that they bumped that the tag title match Usos uh, Red right. Axel from pay per view main card to pay per view pre show. Mm -hmm. That was the last I had heard of it, and I'm only admitting this to like eight people who listened to the Raw thing last night that right. you were doing. But um, yeah, you said you had said uh, during the Raw thing he does a live Raw commentary and a live audio of Raw each week uh, in a live chat room um, every Monday night eight to uh, eight to eleven. I came in and I said, we, something got it sparked, and you're like, no, I heard they actually bumped it from the pre-show, and that's why they're doing it tonight. And I said, no, I think uh, I think they're doing it on um, on Sunday as the pre-show. And I went even as far to say, as if they don't change the titles tonight, I bet they change them Sunday. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, no, 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 they, they dropped Sunday. Forget Sunday. It's tonight. And I was like, no, no, no. Well, we know why, because right. they set up the we... We all seen <laughs> Yeah, they switched that. Um, they thought that was a better. I uh, got news for you. Lord. When I saw Hornswoggle and uh, El Torito on Raw a couple of weeks ago, I marked out a little bit, man. They were fucking. They were killing it. You did too. I was going nuts in you here. You did for that. too, right, dude? Every fucking Not every that. every spot. I'm like, oh Jesus Christ! Look, at that's the greatest you know what? body slam I've ever seen. Not here. only that, they're gonna put mini. Joking, uh, obviously. They're gonna put mini ladders in the ring. There's gonna they're be gonna a little step mini ladder. Chairs, a little tiny yeah, step yeah, ladder. Yeah. They're gonna take little mini chairs. And they're yeah. gonna probably put mini tables. Mini I believe, tables, uh, as yeah. well. They should do like, uh, you know, the kids' tables, like the toys. The, the toy yeah. table. Same thing with the toy chairs. They should yeah. use like plastic the toy chairs. The only thing chairs. I can picture is the obvious step ladder. The little step ladder. I mean, I, right. can, I, I can't picture a small chair or a small table. I know that's what they're doing, but I can't in my I can't envision a small table. They should table. have little kitty like yellow and No, they will. They toys. will. They right. will. It'll be a small chair and a small table to go with the step ladder. But right. I can't, in my head, I can't picture what it'll look like. I know. So I'm I interested know. to see. I think right. El Torito is a great worker. I mean, he's really good. He's man, a fucking. A and decent Mexican midget Horns, fucking wrestler. Hornswoggle, yeah. we don't know. Hornswoggle's Hornswoggle. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. All right, so we had the tag team titles on the line. Uh, who is it? Jey Uso? Jey Uso sold the, the one ankle. That, the ankle yes, or the knee? Yes, right, yes. right, right. Uh, sold that he was... Uh, He's the guy that is isn't on Total Divas. Jimmy is on Total Divas. Jimmy Jimmy's on Total Divas. Married to Naomi. Yeah, yeah, Trinity yeah. or whatever they call her on Total That's Divas. That's her real name, Trinity. Right, yeah, right. yeah, I think. Trinity Fatu. Which well, is, yeah, she took uh, his last name. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so we had uh, the, the, one of the Usos came off the top rope, hit the, hit the, uh, the splash. Jimmy Uso came off. And, or, uh, you know, it might have been Jay with the injury anyways. They retained the title. I don't know. Uh, they retained important. the title. Yeah, there, they retained it. So. Um, this is when Michael Cole came in, announced that DirecTV, Dish Network, group, yeah. no extreme rules. Uh, Adam Rose is coming to Raw next week. Next what do you think about made. that gimmick? You said last week. I've told you, uh, the last two weeks I've predicted that he's going to get over, he's going to have a cult following. Yeah. Where he's going to be, obviously he's a heel, mm -hmm. but I think he's going to get over with a, a certain segment of the audience. Right. Not, not the majority, but there's the going to be this... The marks, and it's going to be a passionate segment that is like a cult segment, like a real passionate. What do you think he does next? Noisy, week? loud segment for uh, those people. Maybe the bus fucking drives up and they're partying, and they comes take, out of the ring. They and take the whole party to the ring. I have no idea. idea. Yeah, something yeah, like that. No idea. I think uh, Adam Rose, the gimmick, will work in WWE. I think Bo Dallas is going to be. I that's going to fall flat on the We've se we've seen him once, yeah, and it failed, and we're going to see him again. And this gimmick's even fail. worse. I know. Like, the, I know. Like, him as a straight, boring Bo Dallas wrestler had more of a chance than believe. Right. You can. He's going to get. He's going to get heat from kids. 
boo, you suck. Right, you know, right, right. But in general, they want that, him that, to they're, not that, they're not getting that whole fucking arena. To, they know, want to him to hate work. or like him. So big because they brought him up once and it failed. Remember the Royal yeah. Rumble? He was yes. in the Rumble. And they used and him on failed. house shows and a couple TVs, right. I even think. So they, they they see potential in him, but they're giving him these gimmicks that just they're, ain't going to work. Damn, they're guaranteeing he's Maybe, not going to get over. Hey, prove me wrong. Prove me right. wrong. Like, like uh, what's his name? Jimmy Curtis? What's his name? The Fandango. What's his name? Uh, uh, Johnny Curtis. Johnny Curtis. Yeah, like he, that guy could get over with the right with the right gimmick. Right. You make him a, a faggy. Sorry. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, a homosexual. No, no, he's not gay at all. But a uh, uh, fruity flamboyant. Dancer, a fruity dancer. I like you know, flamboyant. Yeah, flamboyant works. Thank dancer. You. Thank how you. far can that get over? Right. Right. You know? Well, they had it over, and then they just killed it. Yeah, you know. Um, but Dolph- even then, that was going to be a, a. It wasn't going to be over that long. I thought this was the dumbest I liked thing. It. I thought this I liked was it. the well, tell dumbest what it is first. thing. So Dolph Ziggler is is out in the ring with uh, Hugh Jackman, and yeah. granted, Hugh Jackman, I mean, star of X Men and and the Wolverine, the Wolverine, and everything else. Yeah. So he comes out. Hugh is good in his role. I mean, he's good on the microphone, and he was last time where he was at Raw as well, right? You could say out of the celebrities, that, that at least the era of Raw guest host, the celebrity right. guest host, he's one of the guys that either gets it the most right. or enjoys it the most yeah. or a mixture of both because he, he kind of fits in. Absolutely. He's not right. like, oh, God, we got to listen to this guy plug his whatever, and, yep. and he's like, he doesn't get what's well, going Dolph on. Well, Dolph Ziggler did the quick it. plug at the and very he beginning. It. He basically said, you know, please welcome the guys yeah, who yeah. is coming and they, out. And they, o- and they previewed, the, uh, they showed the preview. They showed the trailer, the trailer. but it was okay. So then Damien Sandow comes out dressed up as Magneto. Yeah. I have no idea. I don't watch movies. I don't, I don't either. Know who no, Magneto. I watch movies. I don't watch. Who's Magneto? I don't read comic books. I've never. I don't watch any of the superhero movies. But I did go to the first X Men movie with my brother Mike. Is that where Magneto? Comes he really from? likes it. I'm pretty sure Magneto is actually one of the real X Men characters, or okay. one of the X Men heels. And what he traumatizes people, or he puts them into a trance. I don't know the character that well. Uh, obviously, he's got like magnetic. Magnetic something, okay. but I don't know what it is. And I think he's one of the guys that opposes the X Men. He's like one okay. of the bad guys against them. So I think. Anyway, so he takes out something, and he's like, "Okay, you said magnetic, magneto makes yeah. sense." Magne- so he's drawing them, and so he's like, "Well, the microphone." Okay, the microphone. And Jackman was playing into it like, "Oh!" oh and, and he's getting. Oh. They're getting. Yeah, the microphone's getting sucked into his magnetic force or whatever, so and the eventually dumbest Jackman. Dumbest thing I've ever seen. Of course, it was dumb. It was. Dude. I'm not. A, I'm not arguing that it was dumb, but I'm saying I thought it was funny. Ja- uh, not Jackman. Uh, Sandow, I thought was funny in his role. I mean, he looked ridiculous <laughs> in that. Uh, he was dressed up in a superhero costume. I hated it. I hated and the whole segment. I'll put it this way: I hated the fact that Sandow is being used as such a jobber, nothing is, comedy dude, asshole right? loser. Right? Yeah. I think the guy's got potential. I, I do too. Stand out. I do too. I say you get, and I wrote about this on eWrestlingNews.com in a recent column. You give a guy. It was the uh, the top ten. I did top ten uh, most underutilized superstars in right. the movie today. Mm-hmm. He, I don't know where I forget where he was on my list, but he was pretty close to the top, like three, four, five, somewhere in there. Okay. I think you give a guy a shitty gimmick, like his arrogant, snobby, smart guy gimmick that he's got, mm-hmm. and you give a guy a shitty gimmick, and he gets it over. Right. I think that means I, absolutely you should give him. If you were to give him a good get, right. Yeah, if I he agree. can take something shitty right. and make it good. I agree. Imagine if you give him something good, what he could do with yeah. it. And they should yeah. at least give him the opportunity to try. But you know what? And the they last, don't. The they're, last they're couple of weeks, like, oh, you did, you got this right. over. Here's well, your reward. We're gonna fucking squash you. And the last couple he of weeks, he must have pissed someone off. Well, back. You know what? The last couple of weeks, man, he was out there. Remember, he was out there with the Big Show, and he was talking yeah. all this shit. And the Big Show stood in the corner, and you knew it was coming. You knew yeah. the Big Show was gonna hit the knockout. Squash him That's what happened, yeah. right? It's the same thing last night. He's attracting you know, yeah. magnets, and then of course Hugh Jackman's gonna either knock him out. He hip lost him. They did the knockout punch the week before with Big Show, so I thought, yeah. all right, Hugh Jackman's going to do a knockout punch too because the last time we saw Jackman on he Raw, knocked out Ziggler. he knocked out Ziggler. Yeah, and yeah. they patched things up, by the way, yeah, before yeah. He uh, Sandow came over. But uh, no, he hip-tossed him, and then Ziggler did the zigzag. And, uh, right, go ahead. Yeah. Caller, you're live on WZR TV. What's up? Ryan, Matt, what's going on, guys? How you doing, man? What's up, buddy? I'm good, I'm good. Hey, um, just had two quick things. Um... I know you haven't run down that far on Raw yet, um, but so this was the go-home show before um, the pay-per-view next week, and 
I this thought at the end of the show, the way they always do it is whatever team has the advantage on Raw goes into the pay-per-view and they're going to usually lose. But they kind of switched it up last night because they had Evolution beating the shit out of the shield. And then towards the end, they came back and they ended the show where they were on top. So now I'm thinking, well, who? Was that just the tease? Like, what do you guys think? Well, do you think the shield is still going to go over? Or do you think... Because the shield got laid out by Evolution two weeks ago. So maybe they just didn't want to have that again because I, I thought that that's how the show was going to end and then they come back and, you know, well, Triple H and Evolution is, is, you know, so I just didn't know uh, what yeah. to think of it. Well, traditional pro wrestling math would state that if, the, we'll just use the names here instead of A, B because that gets confusing. If Evolution lays out the shield week after week after week after week and the last week they lay them out again, and, uh, Pro Wrestling Math states that they're winning this Sunday at the pay-per-view. You know, they, Evolution gets theirs on TV a couple weeks, and then Shield gets it back at the pay-per-view. Now, what they did was, like you said, Evolution lays them out, lays them out, because they're reformed, so they got to get the group over again. So they got them over, and then the go-home show, as you said, they start to lay them out, but no, Ric Flair puts Shield over, and the Shield ends up on top with Evolution backpedaling. Flair was horrible. Unfortunately, that's a different thing. We'll to, to I don't want to lose my train of thought. Because Shield was the last guy standing, and Evolution's backpedaling. Traditional pro wrestling math would tell you Evolution's winning this Sunday. Which, by the way, we got right. some predictions. Unless we're doing right. a whole show, which I'm not sure. But I, uh, yeah, I just had, oh sorry. I yeah, I think they're going to continue. I just had. Go ahead. Oh, I just had one other quick thing. I thought um, Ric Flair, like, that uh, at the end of it, I didn't even remember that he even went out to put them over because he <laughs> shook the hand and left, and it was just like, yeah, okay, and that was it. Like, I wasn't even thinking, like, oh, that's a big shock. I just thought that that was pretty, um, like, unless, was, like, unless, any other ways with that. Um, Jesus Christ. Unless Flair gets involved this Sunday, that segment made no point whatsoever to have him out there. What purpose did it serve? What did it build to? What was the significance of it? It, mean, it means nothing unless that's what I think is happening this Sunday. We're supposed to think Flair's endorsing the Shield, blah, 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 blah. Sunday, Evolution's about to win. Flair, who's supposed to be endorsing him, comes out, screws him, realigns with his buddy's Evolution, and that's how Evolution sneaks one over on the Shield. And that's why the Shield was left looking strong as the last image we saw on Raw because they're going to lose on Sunday via help of Ric Flair, who's supposed to be endorsing S.H.I.E.L.D., not Evolution. That's my prediction. Thanks for the call, dude. We appreciate it. Uh, guys, if you want to call us live, it's 518-712-3070. 518-712-3070. Let's get back into Raw. we got about a half an hour to go. Oh, we're going. Uh, we got Paul, uh, Paul, uh, Paul Heyman. Um, he introduced uh, Cesaro, <laughs> brought him out to the ring. I got a joke for you. Yeah, Mike. Knock, knock. Yeah. Who's there? Mike. Mike who? My client, Brock Lesnar, who defeated The Undertaker at WrestleMania to end the streak. 21 and 1. Get out of here, 21 man. and 1. You got me. Oh, jeez. son Isn't of a fuck. a good one? Yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, so uh, we had uh, Cesaro comes out. Uh, he brings out Cesaro against Jack Swagger. Cesaro's music is still as bad as it Sucks. was the week before. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Cesaro and uh, Jack Swagger, we had... Uh, let me see. It was... Um, Zeb... Uh, what was it? Uh... Cesaro won with a uh, German suplex. That's what it was. I thought that right. was a smash finish. No, that comes later with the Rob Van Dam and all oh, tournament. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so wait, um, Cesaro won clean against Swagger. Cesaro won clean against uh, sure? Swagger. Yeah, there was the no German, interference. German no, there was an interference. Paul Heyman got into it. Yeah, Paul and Heyman was on the, the outside with Zeb, and they were getting into it with each other, and then uh, Something Cesaro like wound up. I wish I had it in front of me because <coughs> I could explain it. But yeah, I knew there was. Alberto Del Rio defeated uh, Cody Rhodes with the cross arm breaker. Uh, the one. Once again, teasing. I mean, clearly, Cody Rhodes is going heel. We put that Obviously. up on the websites today, yeah. right? Uh, they were originally going to do Cody Rhodes against Goldust at WrestleMania 30. Yeah, they were going to do brother-brother brother at WrestleMania, and they decided to keep him as a unit. Right. But they threw him in the Andre Memorial Battle Royal, did nothing with them. I haven't uh, done anything with them since, and now they're going to split him up. I don't like it, man. If they were going to do it, they should have like did it at Mania. They're a good tag you team. Know? They should have done it. That would have, if they're going to do it. I don't think they should do it. If they're going to do, do it, it should have been... Here's a big fucking angle, brother, brother, at WrestleMania. We've talked about like this Brett time and, and time and, and time again. Cody Rhodes, Goldust, they're a great unit together. Yes. They're a great tag team. Keep them together. 
You're going to do the split. Cody Rhodes is going to go heel. Goldust is going to be the babyface. They're going to have that big match. The build-up yeah. going into that big match. Probably at the next pay-per-view. Probably at payback, right? After yeah. Extreme Rules. You're going to do the match. At, after the match is over, it's Cody Rhodes. It's Goldust. They're mid-card jobbers. Keep them as a tag. Not that they're uh, one of the top tag teams in WWE yeah, I'm an right oxymoron. now. Moron. You're either but, a mid carter or a jobber, but yeah, they're mid They're the jobbers of the I mid know card, if you will. Yeah. Um, but Low you're, 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 so you're going to do this match, and then it's going to go back to Cody Rhodes lost in the shuffle. Goldust is you know staying in the comedy gimmick. You keep them together because if they're a tag team, you constantly see good matches out of the Rhodes brothers. Well, you split them up, you get that one big payoff with a mm-hmm. singles match, and then what? You then, said it. Well, you just said it. As a unit in a very weak tag team division, they stand out a little bit. Right. And for a while there, you know, when they were the champs and all that, and when they first got put together, they were standing out above the rest. Absolutely. So in a weak tag team division, they're the shit. They're the best. They're the tops, this and that. Yeah. Yeah. You split them apart after they have the one angle that they're doing it for, which should be somewhat strong to strong. After that's done and you wind down and get out of that, mm-hmm. like you said... They're left. I mean, unless some. They're left. Unless they can really figure something creative out for one of those guys or both, and there's odds are that it'd be Cody Rhodes with the heel turn. But it's yeah. How how what are you gonna how, do how, how strong of a heel can he be? He's as, not great on the mic. No, he's not. No. And he's not that big. And Goldust is always going to yeah. be a comedy. Goldust kid, is yeah. always going to have the nostalgia right. factor. Fans are always going to dig him because right. he's something from the past, you know. Yeah. Uh, and like you said, he's always going to have the comedy if they want to fall back on that. But even that's like less than what he's doing now. And they've tried with Cody Rhodes before, and it just it doesn't. Kind of. He doesn't click with the fans. Kind of. I mean, it, he's always had like a, a partner thing going. He's never really had a shot on his own. Right. Uh, I mean, they did the face mask, but he was kind of with Sandow during that. Right, right, Before right. that, it was him and uh, Ted DiBiase as yep. part of the legacy. Yep. They were the, you know. Yep. So he's never really had a shot on his own, but you could just tell that guy. He doesn't click, man. There's something missing. A, there's something missing. B, right. they're never going to go with him strong, so he's not going to get over. Bring Dusty out there and have Dusty be his manager, his father manager. I think that's worse than good. I mean, really? I, I think that, that, that takes the focus off of him. All right. Everybody's paying attention to Dusty, and Cody's just kind of his hanger on. Yeah, you're probably right. You need to let him sink or swim on his own, and he's going to sink inevitably. Right. Unless you can find so. something creatively to really do with him, which I don't right. think they care enough to try. We had uh, Alexander Rusev. It was basically a squash match against uh, Xavier Woods, one via disqualification. Uh, Truth hit the run in, uh, came yeah. out, did a run in. There, and, uh, they're, uh, that was they're doing the handicap, handicap Sunday. match against Rusev yeah. and uh, Truth and so that was a little uh, for that. right. Um, let's see. By the way, today's Make a Wish Day. Um, what do you mean Make a Wish Day? Or not Make a uh, World Wish Day is is what it's what called. What does that mean? World Wish Day is wishes come true. People grant wishes. WWE's team. Don't they wish today's don't they make them World come true all Wish the time? Day? Well, WWE teams with Make a Wish. Today's the holiday of Make a Wish. Right? Today is one of those days where it's you know bring your daughter to work day, bring your son to yeah. work day. World Wish Day is, is so it's what their Christmas, is, I guess. Mm-hmm. So John Cena, they announced that backstage at uh, at Raw last night, he granted his Two wishes. three wishes, three his four hundred and second, four hundred and third, and four hundred and fourth. Wish four hundred two, four hundred three, and four hundred four. I thought the video package had him granting four hundred two, four hundred three, and four hundred four. Okay. But uh, dude, listen, kudos to WWE for doing stuff like that. I mean, a lot of these kids. And I can picture the the black retard in the in the uh, wheelchair, black handicapped guy. In the yes, middle. whatever. Man. I'm about just, make a wish, man. Sorry, Come I'm. On, I still man. call midgets midgets instead Come of little people. What do you mean to tell you? No, I'm not making fun I at know, all. I at know, all. I know. I know. I know. But it was very touching, is what I was getting to. It was. To see Cena with them, and like you know, you could see how happy the kid looked. Right. Like it, it really it gets you because it does. Like, man, get that you. little Doesn't fucker. Mean? That little fucker. His dream just came true, and you could see on his face he's you so happy. See. Exactly. You can tell he's probably not had the greatest life, but he seems so. Not only related to be with his hero. A lot of these, a lot of these I kids, a lot of these kids don't mm. live past you know the age of you know ten years right. old. The I whole mean, reason of getting to make a wish is you're, you got a Daniel Bryan granted his first uh, his first wish to a kid by the name of Conor McGregor and uh, whoa whoa whoa, are you sure that's his name? Conor McGregor. Do you know who else is Conor McGregor? Uh, I don't. A very famous, not very famous, but he's about to be a very famous UFC fighter, the Irish guy. Conor McGregor. 
I've heard that. Yeah. I've heard that. I do remember. They gave him his own media McGregor. day one day. Yeah. Like they're trying to really make him a big thing in the uh, I think UFC. it's Conor McGregor, man. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. pretty sure. I know the UFC guy. Um, I don't know. But uh, so Daniel Bryan, you know, he granted his first wish to uh, little Conor. and uh, his first wish? Sent him. Yeah, he All wanted to meet years? He wanted to meet Daniel Bryan. Yeah, uh, that, that surprised well, me Even when too, he was man. over with Kane. Like, I know. He was I still know. over to His it. first wish. Through, uh, through Make a Wish. Cool. And, uh, oh, so, is this the kid that died? So we set him up with WrestleMania That's 30 tickets. That's not Conor tickets. McGregor then. That's a different name. Are you sure? Yeah, it's I'm positive. Conor I, I, remember, I remember seeing the name. It's like Brian Krishnacker or something That's Conor something. Or something. I know it's yeah, Conor. Yeah. It's Conor something. Right. Um, yeah. But uh, so we set him up um, with tickets to this WrestleMania 30. The they they, uh, they met uh, at WrestleMania 30. Dan and Brian gave him some tickets through yeah. WWE. And, uh, man, on the God. same week that Dan and Brian lost his father, I mean... Dan and Brian, they were backstage, and they came up with a nickname for him, Connor the Stone Crusher. Um, really? Whatever the last name. Cool. Yeah. They came up with the name, and then uh, on the same week that Dan and Brian lost his father, this little kid, Connor, uh, first passed guy. away as well. Yeah, yeah. man. <coughs> so that it was a, son of a bitch, It was a man. rough, rough week for, uh, for Dan and Brian. And poor little guy, rest in peace to our Connor, too, Rest in man. peace. And, and I put the video up on the website with Dan and Brian in the meeting with Connor. Yeah. <laughs> With his family backstage, dude. Ah, oh, man, it was the most touching thing. I I put it up on the website. I mean, it's an actual uh, comment. Like as sad as sad as the Connor half of that is, it's right. almost like I feel. For, I'm I'm thinking of Daniel. Like, God damn, that's uh, uh, Brian Daniels. Terrible like, man. God damn, he's up here. He finally gets his moment at WrestleMania title, and then he marries this beautiful woman, the woman of his dreams. And then he's on his honeymoon. Right after that, and then his dad oh, dies, his and then his first Make a Wish kid dies. Like, God, it's that's terrible, poor it's, motherfucker, man. You gotta feel. For him, don't you do. You? Hey, but if listen, you're, you're heartless if you don't. Kudos to uh, WWE for doing the whole thing with with Make a Wish. It's awesome that they make a lot there of these is, kids' dreams come true. Man. There's a, really somewhat is, of a controversy cool. in that they publicize the fact that they do all this charity work. What John do you make C of that? John Cena doesn't. No, no, no. WWE I mean, he does. But yeah, Cena did hundreds of these wishes. He's at four hundred and three, whatever you said. Hundreds of these weren't. Even, were they weren't. Promoted or, or but WWE televised. doesn't send to every. I mean, every WWE time. started. Their their big argument it is if we if we publicize and televise the charity work we do, we get more opportunities to do more charity work right. because people know we do it. But like, yeah. there's the opposite argument. Like, if you're going to do charity work, you shouldn't be bragging about it and looking for a, a, a praise, ah. like getting praised for it. You should do it quietly. And just do it because you want to do it, not because you want to look like that. I, I, I get think, a good I mean, rep. Although WWE does publicize some of it, I a think lot a of lot of it, a lot of it, mm. a lot of it doesn't get publicized. Uh, they publicize a lot. Hey, man, well, I didn't hear about John Cena. WWE didn't promote John Cena's first, second, third, That's fourth. That's my point. The first few hundred, they, they weren't publicizing their charity work. Right. They've always done it. Right. And they decided that they could raise more money if people were aware that they're doing it. If they, uh, if they promote it, then they can raise more money, so they're giving more they, money to charity because the, people are aware of it, and that's the, their argument. But but the fact that they're even doing I I know where you're coming from, but the fact I'm that not they're... I'm not nowhere. I'm just no, telling you with the uh, public perception. The, there's a the, debate here and there. Like, is right, it right, right to publicize it or is it wrong? But the fact is, they're doing it. They're doing a lot of charity yeah, there work. There is no right got, or wrong. You've charity, got work, charity work. You've got to respect them for that. good thing, no matter how you look at it. I get it. I get it. All right, uh, let's get back to uh, Los Matadores uh, against uh, 3MB. God, we had uh, they, this is where they announced Torrens Wago against uh, El Torito and what's in the a match called? We LC. We LC. A We LC. They're man. wee little men and a um, LC. So is it only ladders and chairs, or will there be tables? Yeah, what's the we stand for? Well, we is like we man, like uh, little midgets. Right, but we we LC. So LC ladders is ladders and chairs. And chairs. Yeah, so what about the table? I think it's just because it sounds like TLC. TLC. We LC. Right, right, all right. Yeah. Right, right. Um, what did you think of them making a big deal that Heath Slater got a pin? Like they're acting like this was a shocking. Oh my God, Heath Slater actually got a pin. This is the biggest upset ever. To me, it's like whoever wins, Los Matadors or 3MB, they're both job or tag teams. Oh, that's right. Uh, Slater hit him with the DDT, right? And they, I guess. And they but I don't remember the finish, but yeah, right, they made it out right. to be the biggest thing ever. No, they when did. Slater got a win. Like, okay, you got a win. What about uh, Stephanie McMahon's apology and then the uh, the Divas title match? Right, right? around so, this time is where I'm fucking going nuts, so I'm going to have McMahon, shaky memory on this. Well, Stephanie McMahon comes out and she's ready to apologize to Daniel Bryan. So she brings out Daniel Bryan. Daniel yeah. comes out with she, had, she says the universe wants you out here right now or something like that. Right, so... <gasps> 
Uh, Stephanie tries to apologize. She's trying to be all, you know, I'm sorry for what happened. We get it. The chair squeaked. Yeah. Trying to apologize. Uh, well, you for, never end up with a squeak. For what, uh, for what happened the yes. previous week with Kane attacking Daniel Bryan. Uh, Daniel wants nothing to do with it. Knows that her Doesn't apology is yeah. complete bullshit, man. He's not this buying is, it. Yeah, he's not buying it. Um, so, I Brian think there's a... I think there's a. I'm sorry. Uh, I think there's a great chemistry now that they have Bree out there with Daniel Bryan and the way she leads the fans in the last right. chance. And there's just this chemistry there with those two, right? Where Bree is gonna. I think she's gonna get over. I think it's a. It's gonna help Bryan get over even more, right? And B. I think Bree's gonna get uh, elevated because of this. I think the fans are gonna look at her and and be I think behind so. her more. Uh, Stephanie McMahon. I'd love you to know. be behind her, by the way. Jeez, oh, Christ. Me too. Dude. I think uh, Bree's the hotter of the. Uh, she's got the prettier face, but Nikki right. Bella's body. Come the on. body. Yeah, There's no, no doubt. Uh, so this eventually leads to Stephanie McMahon setting up a match right now. Uh, Brie Bella against Paige, basically, or, re- or Brie Bella against um, yeah. yeah, Paige. Yeah, Paige. Um, and then the winner will go on to <clears throat> face Tamina Snuka at the Extreme Rules pay per view. So Brie Bella can win the title right now. Yeah. Paige. Well, she mentioned, uh, yeah, Paige and Tamina is already scheduled or whatever. You know, right? But you could right. change that. You and if you win that. it, you and Tamina. You know. Right. So we had uh, Paige wound up uh, taking out Brie Bella here. No, not really. It well, was, uh, is this where Kane came up yeah, in the ring? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, the, in the middle of the match, or towards the end of the match, I've done this so many fucking I times. I know. With the Kane, coming up to the ring thing. Kane comes up uh-huh. through the ring and tries to go after. He's gonna Bree. drag her to hell. You know, You're right. Whatever. Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan winds up coming in and, and saving Bree. Um, and then you know they, Bree comes back and saves Daniel, and they're saving right. this and saving that, and he hits him with a. Bryan hits Kane with a wrench. And when they came back from the break, there was a backstage segment right of Stephanie McMahon and Bree Bella and Daniel Bryan, right? Yeah, well, it was Bryan and Bree with a doctor, and they're checking on right. Because Bryan, by the way, had a neck brace because of the tombstones last week. Before all what we just said. Right, He's selling the injury angle. Really. So they're backstage because Kane just attacked or whatever. And uh, they're asking him, does it hurt here when I do this? Does it hurt right. when I do this? And, no, no, no. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And, uh, you know, Bree, oh, are you okay? You know, she looks real Bree was awesome. When she said, great. She said, uh, get out of here, you bitch. Or something yeah. like that. That was that was. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that, that was this part. I didn't know if that right. was in the arena. Or, you know, you're right. It was that there. That was the backstage segment. Yeah, and Stephanie was break, pretending right. to be concerned. I swear to God, I, right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, the IC title tournament uh, continued. It was the finals, right? The yes. winner goes on to face Big E this was the for finals. the IC title at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view coming up this Sunday night. Correct. Uh, it was Bad News Barrett against Rob Van Dam. Now, we had put up on the website that the idea here was you're going to set up two matches for Extreme Rules, right? Wade Barrett is going to defeat Rob Van Dam and then go Bad on to face... Barrett. Yeah. Bad News Barrett. And then go on to face Big E... And the way that this was going to happen was... Anybody else think of Bad News Bears when you hear Bad News Bears? I do. I do. It's come across my mind numerous times. But uh, the the way that this was going to happen is Cesaro would wind up coming out and, you know, screwing with Rob Van Dam because they had the angle the previous week on Raw with Paul Ames and Cesaro. Right. 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 So, uh, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, Cesaro wound up coming out, screwing Rob Van Dam. We had reported earlier in the week that there's... Plans for a triple threat match at Extreme right. Rules, Cesaro, Swagger, R V D. We had just heard this as a as a thing. So yeah, this was the the story to Smoke build half up the cigarette. Half half, half, half. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's exactly what they did. Cesaro yeah. wound up coming out, uh, screwing Rob Van Dam. Wade Barrett picks up the win, right? So we've got Wade Barrett against Bad Biggie. News Barrett. Bad news Barrett. Uh, against Big E at Extreme Rules, and then right after Raw went off the air, they announced on dot com that they were going to do the triple well, it was threat on match. The, uh, the post show. Oh, the post show. Yeah. Okay. Do you think Bad News Barrett's winning the IC title? Or something? You know, I thought about it last night. Are we going to do predictions? Uh, we can run we it down keep real quick. Track every... We don't have the card in front of us, but the ones that we can remember, we can do. I can get it loaded up real quick. Nah, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. No. Because I'll, I'll get it up on here. I don't I'll think it would screw it. me up to do that, actually. At the me. very end, we'll do it. Okay. Just so that it'll be our, our last card. thing we do. All right. No all doubt. Right, all right, all right. Um, so, yeah, so Barrett wound up. Do you up think paying... he's winning the title, though? Man, Wade Barrett against Big E. No. Bad news Barrett versus <laughs> Bad news Barrett. <laughs> you know what? I think Big E. Yeah. I think they had. Pun intended. Big plans for Big E, yeah. um, and he's kind of falling flat. And Shit. I know yeah. that 
WWE, we put it up on the website that WWE officials are high on Wade Barrett. They were really, Bad really, oh, Ted Mees Barrett. You're going to get me every time with that. Rockstar. But uh, the, they were really, really high with his promo at the Hall of Fame ceremony. Yes. And then Vince is a huge fan. And he fan. was monstrously over with that post Raw crowd. Right, right. And, and a crowd that was so high, he might have been the most over thing on that show, which right. is saying a lot. And we know that Vince is, is also high on Barrett, so I'm going to see yeah. your opinion. Are. Does wait, does Bad News Barrett win the title at uh, Extreme Yes. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to say yes. I think it's a no-brainer, yeah. actually. Yeah, no doubt. That belt, yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Um, that championship. Sorry. Let's see. They announced uh, Dean Ambrose against Del Rio, Ryback, Curtis Axel for the U.S. title on SmackDown. And then, before the main event, we had uh, Evolution uh, came out together. Uh, Hunter, Grab the mic. Well, the main event was going to be Roman Reigns, Randy Orton. Right. And it started off by, yeah, Evolution coming out. So Evolution comes out, and uh, Triple H is cutting this promo. Uh, said by the way, I'm sorry, last interruption. Um, yes. We were told going into the show, Triple H confirmed it himself that Ric Flair was returning. I knew you were going to bring this. this and this is, is the last, I mean, and we're, I mean, goddamn, that, that last, that IC title thing or whatever mm -hmm. that led into this. Took us to like I don't remember the exact time, but I want to say like ten fifty five or something. Like we only had we were running late. A couple of minutes left before this even started, and they didn't go straight to the match. They started straight with the promo. Well, they went to about so eleven like, fifteen last night, by the way. My yeah. point though is, right. yeah, they come out with this angle, and I'm starting to question: A, are they even going to do Orton Reigns, which they've been promoting all night? And right. B, how the hell is Ric Flair fit in all this? Yeah. You know, I figured, yeah. all right, they'll do that. Before we came back from the break, I thought, all right, we're going straight to Reigns, uh, Reigns Orton. And Evolution will be at ringside, Shield will be at ringside, and Ric Flair will fuck uh, Reigns on the fence. Right, right, right. But that didn't happen. You can Well, tell it, it, it's like Triple H is out there cutting a promo saying, you know, Evolution reminds him of the Shield, right? Back in the day, well, they the were... The Shield reminds him of Evolution. Right, the bunch yeah. of new breed guys coming yes. up and, and making a name Unstoppable for Unstoppable force. Right, right. So, then, Ric Flair's music hits. Woo! And you've got Jerry Lawler. On commentary, saying, Woo? "What? What Woo! is is Ric Flair? What? Oh my God! Yeah, we, tr we guys, knew do you follow Triple H? H Twitter, had announced your boss on Twitter that Ric yeah. Flair was going to be there, so it wasn't a surprise. The announcers no. are trying to, especially Jerry, was trying to make this out like it was a huge surprise to everybody that and Ric Flair was here. You got to think it's not him doing it on his own. It was probably produced. It to, was probably hey, get this saying, over. Like, right. holy shit, what's Ric Flair doing here? You know, right? So Ric Flair comes out, and man, you every time Ric Flair comes out, you said it last night. You think he's drunk? You think something's wrong with him? I didn't want to say that on the air, but yeah. You think something... He seemed like something was wrong. I mean, he was. I had the glasses on, but that's was, the thing. But we, he, he, there, was, I, there was part of his speech pattern, and there's his demeanor. Right. I mean, he wasn't out of control by any... No, no, no. This wasn't the 2K14 symposium at all. You, you, know? you and I talked about it last night, right? Where we had said that Ric Flair cut this promo about how he used to go out back in the day with Evolution, this, that, and the other thing. And then the whole... Turning point was yes. these guys to point to the shield, and when he did the whole the well, turn, when he did the whole turn, he was just like and these guys over. There was no worse he didn't than put that. emphasis worse than that on. I think the story that was supposed to be told was he's supposed to be not specifically saying anyone's name, any group's name. It was like there was you know there's a faction that. That, that used to fucking, or that takes names and kicks ass and nobody right. can stop them and this and that. And you're thinking he's talking about evolution. He says, but it's these guys. The sh it's the right, shield. Right. No, he's like, yo, I used to eat steaks with Batista and I used to fucking go out with Triple H and Randy Orton wasn't around, but he, you know, he was this and that. So he's talking about evolution. Talking about and and the group that's unkillable or undeniable, whatever, is the shield. Uncillable. Like he, yeah, undeniable, whatever. <laughs> oh, no. I, I've had a couple of drinks. Right. It, it, did Rick Flair was, was Rick Flair drunk last night? I don't know. Am I drunk right now? <laughs> yes, but I'm a rock star. Now, drunk, but, oh Jesus! What I do? Is that yeah, six right. or seven? Uh, you're at like eleven now. I don't know what the fuck you're. <laughs> at. As many rock star Anyways. references as I've had beers. Yeah, there's but, another uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, I thought the whole story was he's not supposed to name anybody by name or the group and right. build it up, build it up, build it up. Oh, but he's talking about the shield, right. not evolution. And he, he was but no, like, he's talking about this guy, Ed Batista, this guy Triple H, this guy Randy Orton, evolution. evolution Evolution, evolution, evolution. And then he's Today, like, oh, the it's shield. the shield. It was, there it was fell no... Flat. Yeah, it fell flat. Yeah. It, 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 if, if, if he cut that promo talking about evolution, and then all of a sudden out of nowhere he turned over and he says, and it's these guys, right? Yeah. If he put some emphasis, 
into the shield part. Right, and you don't but say he didn't. you he don't didn't. say the names because then you're you're assuming he's talking about the shield. Uh, the right. But he's not saying evolution. He's not saying You don't Batista. mention Triple H, Batista. Yeah. Yes. You build it up, build yes. it up, build it up. Don't say and names, then, don't say names. Everybody assumes and then, you're talking about evolution, but then he does the switcheroo. And then when he made it, when he, when he did the switcheroo, the crowd, there was like no pop from the crowd. And so everybody was dead. Yeah. Even the announcers, and you could tell that Vince was probably in somebody's headset saying, try to get that over. Really sell yeah. that Ric Flair's joined the Extra Shield. Extra sell it because Flair didn't do well, a great he, job. Yeah. Yeah. Flair didn't do, <laughs> Flair did a terrible try. I don't want to say so, terrible, but he didn't do good. So throughout the whole Reigns versus Orton match, the announcers, I can't believe what just happened. I can't believe Flair. Yeah. And the crowd shook their hand like, and everything. Huh? Yeah, the yeah. crowd's like, what? What? Uh, did he join yeah. the Shield? Well, to the live crowd, they don't yeah. hear commentary, so yeah, they're not getting right. told the, the details of the story like we were. By the way, Monday Night Raw, right here in Albany, New York, yeah. and we're not going. It is so this busy. This fucking guy's what is work. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I will say this. You know what? I'll I got to do play by play roll. I'd still say, hey, boss, I, I, I need to take Monday Night Raw. I will leave it at this. Yeah, we've got extreme rules on Sunday night. Yes. We know that Raw is not sold out. It's not selling right. out. Well, you can take two break. seconds. Let's see how things go on Monday. Let's see how things go on Monday. Yeah. Okay, if we can get all the news, it can't really work that way for me. If yeah. I'm gonna go, I gotta tell my boss I can't do play by play. You can tell play. your boss that I can't four tell at four or five in the afternoon. And then he's got three hours to find a replacement for Raw me. Comes, <laughs> Raw comes. Raw comes. He may not have play by play for one week. You let him know on Sunday you know night. You know what we're hey, talking about, right? Yes. You let him know on you Sunday night. You think he's going to be all oh, okay. You let him know on Sunday week. night there's a possibility I might be going to Raw yeah. on Monday well, no, night. Let him know t- I'm going to let him know tonight there's at least a possibility. There's a possibility, so yeah, I so may have not be able to do in coverage. Case. So yeah. let's see how things go on Monday, because it would be cool to come on here on Tuesday and say we were at Raw last you night. You know, there's another way we could do it. If you're Mr. Busy, I can't go. i got to work. Sit your ass in there and do your work. Me and your sister will go to Raw, I'll call you, we'll do fucking live chat, I'll be there, and you'll be talking to your fans, and... Oh, yeah. I'm down. Sounds like a great all idea. Right. Well, that'd be great. I'm <laughs> glad to take a day off of work and go do that shit. Yeah, right. If, you, if you're all down, Mr. Right. Busy, I can't put work off for fucking two hours. I can, but... Three hours. Let's see how things go on Monday, and then during the evening hours, if we're caught up and it doesn't look like it's going to be a crazy day... I say we go. We'll go down there, and we'll do a walk-up, and we'll get tickets. I say we go. I say we go, too. I say we go. I, as long as everything is I cool on Monday. I think the fans think it would be cool. A, we should do a little live thing outside the arena like we always do. Yes. 40 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. Well, we can't do that because we don't have anybody I to I could get produce. somebody to do it. Sure, oh, I could. Right. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, and we can't be doing video, obviously, but we could do audio. Uh, and either way, we could record stuff while we're there mm. and then have that for Tuesday next week. Yeah, we could do that. You know? Let's... Play it by year on, on we'll Monday. Play it by year. All right, so the match ended. We had, um, what, Roman hit the uh, the spear on somebody, yeah, right? Yeah, everybody interfered. There was no Every, they, You're right. Everybody yeah. interfered, and uh, Raw kind of went off the air with Shield and Evolution. Well, and Evolution was doing their beat down of the Shield as usual, and then next thing you know, Shield's coming back. Right. And it ends with, uh, did somebody help them, I want to say? But I guess not. Uh, Shield. No, Flair never wound up coming no. back, yeah. But I guess somehow, I don't remember, I don't have Raw in front of me like him, and, and I was drunk and doing play-by-play, so I couldn't pay attention. Somehow, S.H.I.E.L.D. ended up on top, and Evolution was backpedaling, and that's how the show went off the air. That's uh, how I remember it. Right. Is that right? Yes, it was. Okay. Seth Rollins uh, wound Rollins. up coming back. Rollins. Yeah, that's Rollins. right. That's right. He can't, he was, And I thought that was interesting, because you would assume if somebody's making the save... It'd be Roman Reigns. Mm. But no, Reigns and Ambrose were being beat down and Rollins was selling on the outside. And out of nowhere, I remember Rollins doing like a leapfrog off the top rope or some shit, a springboard. Right. And then next thing you know, Shield's getting the upper hand, Evolution back backs off, and, and yeah. Now, Rollins with Shield on top. I am going to try get a, get to get a, the uh, card up yeah, for yeah, yeah. Uh, Extreme Rules. If you go to the site I work for, it's the top story. Is it? Yeah. A 24? Sure. Okay. Either one. All right. No doubt. Yeah. I'm gonna get the uh, the card up. What else happened over the uh, the week? Any any? Well, big there was news? sacrifice. I mean, there was a TNA sacrifice paper. We can't talk run about the, that a little bit. Why? We can't the, run the uh, whole the thing down. I'll say this. I didn't like that show. 
I did not like Sacrifice. that. Sacrifice. I'll tell you what. The crowd was brutal. Here, how about I'll, I'll do it. Well, you, well, well you, it's easier for okay. you to run it down, okay. and I'll, I'll do this. Okay, so Sacrifice on uh, Sunday night. First of all, <laughs> there were uh, two title changes during the pay-per-view. Uh, the Wolves wound up uh, defeating yeah. the, the Romans yeah. in the opener. Well, it was uh, a six-man, actually, right? Or no, it was two it was and three tag handicap. Team. It was a handicap match. Yeah, DJ Z was DJ in Z, there. Robbie E, and uh, the other guy there. Um, Jesse Goddard. Jesse Goddard. Um, so they were in there. And, I didn't even uh, watch TNA. Yeah. So the Wolves know. wound up winning the uh, TNA Tag Team titles. This is their second reign. If you guys remember when they first came into TNA, I think it was on their first night, they wound up winning the uh, Tag Team titles. And then um, they only hold, held them for seven days. And then uh, they took them right back off, and now they're TNA Tag Team Champions again. <laughs> and then and the other uh, title change on the show was Angelina Love... Uh, defeated Madison Rain for the TNA Knockouts Her title. Sixth reign. Velvet Sky came up with a can of hairspray and uh, came up with a, a can of hairspray and uh, distracted, caused the uh, distraction. And uh, An- Angelina Love. What happened to Angelina Love? My God, she used to be banging back in the day. And I'm not listening. Her body is still smoking hot, but that face, she's had some work done. And sometimes. People go out and they get work done, and it's not for the better. Angelina Love, I mean, clearly, she's had lip injections. Her lips are huge. And then something with her face where she's just, I don't know. There's something, I don't Angelina know. Angelina Love looks like fucking a she freak. She looks like a, an alien a or something. A freak. Her looks face bad. is ridiculous. Yeah, it's not good. She got a bad titty job. Her face is way it's overdone. It's not bad. It's not but good. But I'll give you this. Brooke Tessmacher just had a titty job. She got a breast revision or something. She she got breast implants. They fucked up the first yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. She had to go back and then get them. I don't changed. think it was reduced, but it was a revision. Like they redid them. Okay. Velvet Sky, on the other hand, she's banging. My God. Yes. Chris Sabin. My God, dude. Chris. And I'm supposed to be professional. I'm doing. Hey. I'm doing sacrifice play by play like I did Raw. Yes. I couldn't help it. During the match, I'm making these little comments, and, and Velvet you Sky... You jacked off in the middle of the No. All right. <laughs> I'm, how would I have time? I don't know. No, I'm, I'm writing, like, yo, because there was a spot where Velvet Sky, it was the finish, distracted the ref with her ass, you know, shaking yes. her ass in front. And I said, and Velvet Sky hops up on the apron and distracts the ref with her fucking amazing ass. <laughs> you know, like, I couldn't help it. I had to throw in adjectives and shit. God damn, she looks good. Hey, I mean, bro... I'm telling you, you keep talking about Velvet Adam, Sky's ass. I gotta grab a pen so that I can write this all right. down. All right, Adam. Okay. All the women, and this is a shitty topic to to sit here and, and kill time with, but fuck it, I don't care. Out of all the women in wrestling, WWE, TNA included, both of them, I'd say you. My opinion, AJ Lee number one. Where are we at on the camera? AJ Lee number one. I might go Velvet Sky number two. I really might. There's something about that chick that turns me the fuck on. Eva Marie would be in there. <laughs> I walk back in the right. He turns me the fuck on, I hear. He turns me the fuck she on? She turns me the fuck on. Yeah, no. But, uh, uh, okay. Velvet Sky is not a heat. That's for Shit. sure. Shit, yeah. Okay. Angelina um, Love might be and just had a lot of plastic surgery. So, know. we are going a little uh, over time. Love. Good looking girl. Yes. She just kind of got too much shit. The main her. event, Eric Young and Magnus fell so flat. The crowd, the match even of the, night. the ending sequence, the crowd was no, I would disagree. I, I thought mm. the I thought the crowd got into that match towards the end. I don't know. Uh, now the match of the night was clearly uh, match of the night was clearly uh, very obvious match of the night. The best match on TNA Sacrifice. Best There's not even a on, question on which one it was. TNA Sacrifice. Uh, Bully Ray and no. Um, that was a good match. I Come thought. Oh, with the Dixie disguise finish. That was bullshit. Well, the finish was was ridiculous. I didn't think the match was that great. Um, Dude, come on. I, I don't know. Kurt, Ang- Kurt Angle was on the outside. Oh. It wasn't that match. That Kurt. match wasn't that great at all. It was terrible. James Storm. Oh, yes. Gunner. James Storm and... Uh, that Gunner. match was great. That was awesome. Great. You're right. You're right. And they actually used a real beer bottle, and they had shards of glass. They always used the uh, real, real but beer bottle. But I guess... Bottle. I don't know. They had shards of glass, and every time they'd get landed on their back to a flatback or get slammed or whatever... They'd have glass shoved in the oh, back, yeah. cut up backs, and yep. the finish was him taking it, and I'm going to fucking cut your face. Yeah, that's what you know, he said. I quit, I, I quit. quit. Yeah. You do that one more but time, no. I'll fuck you with the off plan. No, but uh, there was the, the big spot that scared the shit out of me. They took the two, because the finish at lockdown. Yes. Was, I guess, was it, was it a cage? Yeah, obviously lockdown. It was a cage match. The the big finish was on a superplex off the top of the, uh, the top rope or top of the cage. I think it was top of the rope. 
uh, through. They had two chairs like facing each other, mm. and he did. A oh, I remember through the two chairs. Right. Well, yeah. on sacrifice, right. they set the chairs up again. He goes up for the superplex, gets knocked down. Like, oh, they're not going to do it again. Right. Good, because that shit probably hurts. Yeah. Wait, worse. Yep. They're going to take that fucking guardrail, yep. put it between the two chairs, or on top of the two chairs, and superplex them on... Oh, yeah. God, could oh, you Scott, imagine? It's, dude. Could you imagine? They did it with, uh, uh, when I went to uh, Ring of Honor in New York City. Was Kevin oh, guy Zane. had a beer bottle broken over his head, and that's how they... Oh, it was Kevin Steen and somebody else. That wasn't even the finish. Remember. I know, I know. It was crazy. All right, here we go. Kevin Steen who? I'm sorry. I can't remember who it was, uh, but at the Ring of Honor show I went to, man, it was Kevin Steen. God, they took a guardrail and chairs and everything else and they set up this big contraction and it was wow can, can what um con, contraction 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 that's the what I said I thought you said contraction like okay chicks having birth extreme rules alright you ready birth. brother yes, yes here we go let's go I'm right. By the way, for the record, I know you kick my ass every time you're gonna bring it. go ahead brag go ahead, go ahead. Brag, brag, real quick. Brag, brag a little bit we've been keeping track of the last three pay-per-views and I don't know the exact numbers but I've gotten way more right than he's gotten right. right. Way less wrong than I've gotten wrong. I've been losing like crazy. But let's, but uh, extreme rules? This one's going to be tricky, man. I'm yeah? Right now, I'm going to get a couple wrong. You I, think? I'm telling you right on the camera. What are you, uh, Dolphins, um... What the fuck's his Dolphins name? Dolphins, 1925. 72. 1972? 1925, I thought. 1972. I thought it was 1925. Right. We'll say 72. Right. I thought it was 72. All right, here we go. You ready? All right, let's go. So, the rumored match, which is now confirmed. We have it confirmed. Yeah. Uh, Rob Van Dam. Well, let's start against, from the bottom and go up. We are. Okay. Uh, or, no, the pre show match. Okay, let's do that. We'll yeah. do the pre show match. You ready? Hornswoggle against El Torito. How did you pick a winner? We LC. Listen, you pick somebody, I'll pick the opposite. All right. I'm going to say, my logic, I'm going to say Hornswoggle. My logic here, good, because my logic here is it doesn't matter who goes over, doesn't it? I, I go with the baby face, so I'll go El Torito. El Torito? Yeah. All right, so boom. Has L, Tor, and then I won't write them all the way out. Yeah, you abbreviated two letters off of there. All right, Tor, I, T, O, three letters. Or, or you're going L, Tor, and I'm going yeah, Horny, right? I'm going Elter. I'll just put Horny. Elter John. All right, so we got that. Um, Then we got Rob Van Dam against Cesaro against Jack Swagger. I am going to go Cesaro. He's with Paul Heyman. Yeah. It's that and the other thing. Um, So that's who I'll take there. That's a tough one, man. My my immediate thought is obviously Cesaro should win, but right. they might have Cesaro and Swagger angle mm. in this match, and RVD goes have over RVD because those over. two are fucking. I like it. I'm gonna go with that. Give me RVD. RVD. Ah, I want to take Cesaro though. Yeah, go give me RVD. I think he might. That's pretty good, I man. Think they what out. you just yeah. uh, brought up, it might be angled out. You're right. Okay. All right, um, Alexander Rusev against R Truth and uh, Woods. I'm going with R Truth and Woods. No, <laughs> Rusev. Yeah. All right, so we're both going Rusev here. All right. Um, we've got a steel cage match: John Cena and Bray Wyatt. I'll do uh, my pick first. You know, I think at WrestleMania, John Cena he wound up getting the win. Uh, I think this is Bray's moment where he comes back and wins this one. Although, the angle that they did on the go-home show on Raw last night kind of made you believe that, you know, if Bray escapes the cage, you know, the message is never going to go away, this, yeah. that, and the other thing. But I am going to go Bray here. Yeah, I, I, similar thoughts. Uh, Cena got the win at Mania, even though Bray should have won that match at Mania. Um, even Stephen Booking, yeah, you gotta go Bray. I'm you gotta go Bray. Bray. One and Bray. one, right? In the series, yeah. if they're gonna go with series, you've got to go Bray. Even if they're not going series, uh, right. there's no reason to beat Bray twice. You can't, especially a guy that they're pushing. An emerging pushing. character, yeah, you don't right. beat him twice. They yeah. shouldn't have beat him in Mania, but they did. So he's that like, should have been his big moment at yeah. WrestleMania. I don't know about don't big moment, agree? but that should have been one of many moments on his ascension. Uh, but it's WrestleMania, Cena never loses. Cena, not you know. never, but he's not yeah, losing two out of three because he lost to Rock right. and beat Rock. But, uh, what do you think about uh, Paige? And you got me down for Bray? Okay. Yes, it yes, is. Yes. Page and Tamina <clears throat> Snuka. You know, I think when they no brought better. Page up at first, you know. I have one thought, though. Yeah, we gotta go Page. I gotta go Page. Yeah, I'm gonna go Page, but my one thought is if AJ's returning, maybe she returns and screws Page. And, uh, Ooh, that's a good point. But uh, no, I'm gonna go uh, Page. Page? Alright. So, so far, El Torito and Horny for yeah. me. 
Uh, Rob Van Dam for you and Cesaro for me. Uh, both got Rusev, both got Wyatt, and both got Paige. So there's two we disagree on. Two so we disagree. Somebody's going. Uh, Somebody going down. Yeah. All right, here we go. Next up is for the IC title. Uh, we talked about this earlier. Yeah. We're both going to say Bad News Barrett yes. is uh, is going to take the. Uh, I was trying to think if there's any way to angle out of that one, and I don't. I don't. There's nobody Bray or Bray. Uh, bad News is working with that would make sense. Like, oh, they'll screw him, and that'll start yeah, their program. Yeah, because RVD, Cesaro, and Swagger. Are yeah, you got to go Bad News. All right. We'll go bad news on there for the title change. Um, evolution against the Shield. You know, I've, I've, I've really I gotta say, one. I gotta say, if you're if you're trying to build up the Shield, now are they gonna do a Shield split? And we know that the reason that they're doing Evolution against the Shield in this whole storyline is eventually they're gonna set up Triple H against Roman Reigns, yeah. likely for SummerSlam. I'm gonna say. I'm going to go with the Shield here. I think the Shield needs it more than Evolution. I think Evolution is a group of established guys in Triple H, Randy Orton, and Dave Bautista that really don't need to win. Uh, where the Shield yeah. to get a big win over Evolution um, would make. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to take Shield That's here. A really, really tough one for me. Now I'm looking at it the way you did. I'm looking at it knowing the end game is Triple H, Roman Reigns, and singles match. Mm -hmm. No one the name of the group is Evolution. I would say that the angle should be, and I'm not saying this is what they're doing, I haven't heard this is what they're doing, but the angle should be Rollins, Ambrose, turn on Reigns, join Evolution at some point, and now Reigns has got to fight all these fuckers by himself. I like it. Look at you. Plus, I got I to be honest, some of your ideas tonight, bro. Yeah, but, uh, matches, fuck I like me. Them, I, got, I got to go Evolution. You're going Evolution. I, go evolution. I like it, man. We disagree. I really I want to pick the shield, but now I gotta go evolution. All right. Yeah. You're, yeah you I'll know, go you said going into this, this is kind of a tough, it's tough, tough show. fucking tough show. You're right. You really think about it. Yeah. By the way, this pen sucks. It's like no, it's beautiful. Let me see that. It looks love like it, a comfortable dude. pen to hold. Look, try to try to write on. Here, on I'll this. do the next one. Give me the next one. All right. Match. Um, the next I'm match left here, so. is gonna be. Um, let me see. It's. So that's it. After no, this, it's gonna, no, that that's it. It's yeah. gonna be Daniel Bryan against Kane for I'll the go ahead world. And write Daniel Bryan for you. We'll go Daniel Bryan um, for me. What do you think, Daniel Bryan? No, I'm talking about the pen. Yeah, I mean yeah. I'm writing on a rough surface. Here. Yeah, try to try to do it on there. Isn't it smooth? It's a very comfortable right. pen. Yeah. It's really smooth when it comes across. Daniel Bryan for me, Daniel Bryan for <coughs> you. So, final tallies. Here we go. Final tallies are. Read them down, brother. All right. This Sunday, live on pay-per-view, unless you have DirecTV, Dish Network, or AT&T U-verse, <laughs> live on the WWE Network. It's a, not a pay-per-view, it's a special, special event. event. Right. Is Extreme Rules live from the Izod Center in East Rutherford, New Jersey? Uh, I, wonder, I do have a double chin. I see it in my phone. Yeah, I don't get too. But uh, the pre-show <laughs> match: El Torito versus Hornswoggle yes, in a WLC match. Matt Boone, the rock star, <laughs> goes with El Tor. El Torito. El Tor. Mr. Ryan Clark's going with Horny Hornswoggle. Horny Hornswoggle. Uh, next up, uh, we're not saying this is the official bot order, by the way, but uh, yeah. next up, triple threat match. We got RVD, Cesaro, and Jack Swagger. Matt Boone, the rock star, goes with RVD. <coughs> Mr. Ryan Clark goes with Cesaro. Handicap match. Alexander, Alexander Rusev, the Bulgarian brute, versus Arch Ruth and Xavier Woods. We both go Rusev. Both going Rusev. Steel cage match. John Cena versus Bray Wyatt. We both go Mr. Wyatt. No, oh, I thought you picked... Uh, yeah, you did pick Wyatt. Okay. The WWE Divas Championship. Page versus... Uh, I forget. Tamina Snuka. We both go with the lovely UK diva known as Paige. Known as Paige. Bad News Barrett versus Big E for the WWE... Have you ever, Inter when you do WWE, have you ever thought of two U's? Like double U, double U, E. Have you ever thought of that in your head? No. Never. No. We thought Bad News Bear, Bad News Bear the other day, or the earlier. We thought that. No. You've never pictured double U when you hear somebody w? say double U? No. Double U. Double U, double U, E. I get what you're saying, but it's yeah. never. It's and never if enough. you look at it, two U's make what? I thought you picked Cena. In, uh, in Why would you write no, that? No, I know, well? I know. Well, I'm no, I almost years. picked uh, Snuka to mean it because I said AJ might return and screw up. All right, okay. Um, on. but no, if you put two U's together, what does that make? Uh, two U's together, it makes a W. Yes, yeah, yes. So double U, double U, and if you put 
double U's together, you get a W. Come on, nobody's ever thought of that. Let's give him a golf. Nobody's ever thought of that before. before. All right. Anyway, <laughs> I see title bad news Barrett. Uh, Big E. We both went with Mr. Barrett. Mr. Bad News Barrett. We got a six-man tag team match, faction versus faction. We got Evolution versus the Shield. Evolution for this guy. The rock star picked Evolution. The Shield. Jabroni Jobber. So we disagree on three so far. Uh, one, two, three, and that's three. all we disagree on. Yeah. And then the main Bryan. event, we have the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Daniel Bryan versus Kane. We both picked Daniel Bryan. We will save these for next yes. Tuesday night. How many matches is that? Eight. That is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Did you make this or someone else make it? Um, we got to show this. A guy one that we used to, uh, a guy that we used to. I don't really know cool. if he still listens. You didn't but, uh, make it. Long story short, I didn't make it. Uh, we came fan, down. He's at a wrestling show. I went down Tell to the New story York City. Show it. They I went these down. Flyers. Look at this. <laughs> I went down to uh, to New York City, and this is when we had the uh, the old domain it was name. Richard uh, Gray, too, as the other co-host. Right. This is when we had the old domain, which we officially launched with, which was uh, WZRRadio.com. We do, we no longer have that. We renamed it to uh, WZROnline.com, obviously. But um, I went down to uh, Ring of Honor uh, in New York <coughs> City, and uh, I was standing in line waiting to get into the building. Hundreds of them. A fan came up to me with a huge. So cool. A fan came up to me Sorry. with a huge bag, um, and he said, "Here you go. I made these for you." And I said, "What are these?" And I opened it up, and there was, I would say, about a thousand of of these things uh, in a bag. Everybody and at that ROH show had a star <coughs> flyer. Uh, we handed them out to all the ROH. Did you help hand them out? I was handing them out. Uh, uh, my buddy Dave. Roots. My buddy Dave that uh, went down there Dave as well. Ryder. I've also yeah. Dave Rodder. I've also handed him out in Albany at events. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, can't use it anymore because it can't says use wrestling it. zone. It's got the wrong host, right. and yeah, wrong and host, wrong domain, wrong phone number, and everything else. But oh, uh, what was the old phone number? It was uh, two two eight something. Why do I know that number? Was it two four eight seven something? Seven six. Yeah, I know that number. Two eight two. Yeah. Four was that, seven, your, seven, that wasn't six. your old cell. You had the same cell. No, like that's uh, that was the uh, that was the Skype number. Okay, I yeah. remember that number. Oh. Okay. Well, so he uh, he made these up for us, which was awesome. Bro, we got the best awesome. fans, man. We've they, got the best. Fans. Man, they make little drawings of us in a tank, and it's they awesome. make flyers. Isn't and it they, awesome? Man? Yeah, it's it is really great. really cool. Um, all right, so listen, I am going to be back on Facebook on Friday evening, uh, I believe at about 9 o'clock so Eastern feedback time. if we're plugging. Feedback. We need some <laughs> feedback, man. Will you put up a feedback? I know you I do, do every, every week. week. Yeah. All right, so hey, you got to do feedback. We want your feedback. I think it was a pretty fucking good one tonight. We felt think? pretty good, yeah. Sure. yeah it was good. It Absolutely. was good. Uh, feedback. Go to Facebook.com slash Matt. Boone WZR. I can't do anything on Facebook. I'm suspended until Friday night at about 8 or 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Feedback. Facebook.com slash Matt Boone WZR. Yes. He's going to put up the post All right now. We started about 5 minutes late tonight. We went 15, 20 minutes yes. long for you guys. Tried to make it up for you. Going to be back next Tuesday night. It's going to be a busy one. Yes. Extreme Rules on we Sunday night. We got Extreme night. Rules, Mayweather to talk about. Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Raw. Got all sorts of good stuff. Impact tapings, all that stuff. Can't wait to get back on Facebook. Can't In wait. the meantime, follow me on Twitter, facebook.com slash Ryan Clark, or twitter.com, <laughs> twitter.com slash Ryan Clark WZR, twitter.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. While you're at it. Twitter.com slash M Boone M B O O N E 420. Twitter.com slash M Boone 420. 420? Yeah. Huh? Well, I haven't smoked in fucking years, but, or months, I guess. It's just, We're out of here, brother. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. Uh, feedback. We want your feedback at Facebook.com slash Matt Boone W Z R. That's Facebook.com slash Matt Boone W Z R. For this rock star right here. Rock star Matt Boone. It's Ryan Clark. Jabroni Ryan Clark. See you guys next Tuesday night. 8 to 10 Eastern time. Dub. Yeah. And you. Let me see our online.com.